in the Lighten Up Lounge. We drink, we smoke, we interrupt. Uh, poker night last night. It was, uh, well, nobody asked, but, you know, it's a regular uh, once-a-month tourney. And it was a lot of work. A lot of work playing uh, poker completely sober, but, you know, it came in fourth, which is good, in the money, in the points. Yeah, yeah, yo. And then I discovered uh, something about Mark C.G. Boyer. You know, anyone that makes a statement of authority and he deems to have authority, I agree. He 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 agrees with them, no matter who it is. We had this this poker dealer and a professional poker player. You know, A.K.A. professional poker player, but a poker dealer from Las Vegas. Good guy, young guy. And uh, he split a pot. And I said, and I stopped everyone. I was the only one at the, it was the cash game after our attorney. Yeah, he, and I was the right. only one. Hey, Mark, don't get ahead of the story. Oh. All right? Thanks, he, he's, Mark. He's hard to work with. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, I mean, Mark. He just is. Is. That's my brother, Mark. Oh, my That's goodness. Billy Dilly, our HR man and Marty. cat whisperer. He's over there. Yeah. He's, a, he's a vet. He's a marine and a cat whisperer. But cringe, just cringy. Yeah. No, nah, I'll tell you what. We're getting more hits than the regular show. <laughs> he has a little cat whisperer bit on YouTube. <laughs> he's, he's popular, that HR man, Billy Dilly. So where was I on this? Because hey, I wanted to distill this down as quickly as possible. Our poker. Yeah. We're yeah so I, he split the pot. And he so he split, he split the pot, and uh, I knew he was wrong. But. But, but no one else, and even Roman, you know my poker playing buddy Roman. Oh, well, he's a professional. He knows what he does. Uh-uh. Don't ever. Don't. I have didn't grow up that way. Well, he's a professional. See, this is where this is where you separate the men from the boys. Putting credence in the pros, you don't, because everyone can make a mistake, or you're not. Aware of their agenda, and just maybe they're broke and they need money. Just because you're professional doesn't make you. Uh, that, that you that well, you know it, what did I just say? You yeah. you can you can screw up on occasion, yeah. and uh, and he and he did. Even though Mark said no, he's completely 100 percent right. And then it finally turns out that oh, he was twenty dollars off. I still believe he was a lot more than twenty dollars off, but he put twenty bucks in. And what am I going to do? I'm not going to start a big fight at Chris Brown's house, my buddy. I won't do it, even though I, I think there was 20 uh, or 40 or 60 bucks more owed to me. It's not worth losing a friendship over, you know, 20 or 40. Or, but, but Mark or, was or like, is yeah, it? Yes, sir, Principal, oh, yeah. you're correct. Oh, yeah, yes, no, 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 he's no, instantly. Right and, and now fast forward, he's Mark. Got, he's professional. Mark, he knows. Mark, fast uh, forward yeah. an hour and a half, mm-hmm. splitting the pot again. My buddy Hassan, the terrorist to my left, and I are splitting a pot in it's a it's a five card game of Omaha, so it's big O, and and we both hit the uh, the low. Mark hit the high, or well, it doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't matter, Mark. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Why do you have his mic on, Laurie Downey Jr.? Uh, it's I mean today today, and he keeps doing it. <laughs> keeps interrupting. <laughs> You know, we should title this show, We Smoke, We Drink, We Interrupt. We should. Yeah, we should. <laughs> we, we? <laughs> we, we. You got a turn in your pocket? <laughs> so, same thing. Dig this, but follow me on this. He's splitting, he's splitting the pot, and I look down and I see that Mark is taking three quarters of the pot instead of half. Right? You're following? Yeah. yeah. It's my terrorist friend to the left. He and I are sharing half the pot with our high. Yeah. Mark gets half or low. But he is, he's split, and there's three quarters. Now, poker pro over to the right here, he says, no, that's completely right. So then Mark 
instantly chimes in. Yeah, it's 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 exactly the way. I said, stop. I had to yell now. I had to yell. I said, stop. Everyone, stop. This is the way it works. You get half, we get half. Notice a discrepancy? Mark looks down and says, oh, yeah. And then Poker Pro looks down and says, oh, yeah, that's not right. You know why? Because most people are lemmings. Mart, Lori, Billy Dilly. I don't need to tell Mark C.G. Boyer this. Most people are lemmings. They will accept whatever they're fed. Whatever you tell them, oh, well, you must know. And I guess if there's a lesson to be learned here, my friend, don't be a lemming. Don't accept. The, if, if you know that something's up, if you feel in your gut that something's wrong, say, see something, say something. Right? Well, I, I, don't be a lemming, but you can be a pepper, a Dr. Pepper. I'm a pepper, too. Well. Okay. Mark, yeah. what, what, I mean, you really are the kind of guy, man. Yeah, he is. I know. Yeah. In school, he'll, de- he'll decide with it, with anybody uh, that he thinks is uh, is the expert. And you know what I think about experts. Do I stand here at this line, man? Do I, do I Ex- wait here? Do I wear a mask? Do I do that? How much credence have we put do. in into the, the workings of experts? The CDC, who yeah. all ah. these lying sacks of s with nothing but political yeah. agendas. So screw the expert thing. Go with your gut. You can usually smell if something's wrong. Don't be a lemming and speak out. I'm not talking out of school here, Lori. you you got to be on the same page, Lori Downey oh, Jr. Yeah. Oh, my great mic. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Right. Am I here? Am I here? Is right. this a cell phone that's working? Wake up. Can Doctor. you hear me? Can you hear me? No, I never listen to anybody. No, no, no. I know not that, Lori. you. No, you, <laughs> no, you, you should. Uh, well, I'm the one person you should listen to. Not always. And I know... Mm-hmm. An Irish guy that doesn't drink. I believe. Uh, I believe. I now understand. God bless him, God bless him for not drinking. He I, must be dead. I don't. He's, yeah, he's either dead. I certainly don't trust him <laughs> if he's walking around. I. Uh, I believe I now understand why our YouTube channel, which uh, is easy, easily obtained. You can procure it by punching in Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio in YouTube. Exactly like that, Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio in YouTube. Uh, but I think I understand why our YouTube channel is not getting the traction that it so richly deserves. Um, I posted something on Facebook, and I think this will all come together for you. And it was a posting that went ho- horribly wrong. <laughs> No. What, Laura? I said no. Okay. And I shared this on my Facebook page. My personal page is M-A-T-T, last name Allen, Matt Allen. They don't like the magic uh, Matt monikers on Facebook, so we just use the close to, close to original real name, M-A-T-T-A-L-A-N. I simply posted this. Now, listen carefully if you if you'd be so kind. They all laughed when I said I wanted to be a morning show host. Well, they're not laughing now. Okay. Bill Franklin, very good man. He posted, where are you doing mornings? I then replied, five days a week, Bill. Bill Franklin says, which channel and what network? I, I, uh... I then ignored that, and then Dave McCormick threw in the morning show that I've been doing for years, right? So that should clear it up. I began the Facebook with a posting. Shouldn't that clear it up for all concerned? Well, yeah. Anyone right. that wants to post a reply to, to my initial, they all laughed when I said I wanted to be a morning show host, where well, they're not laughing now, should that not clear it up? Uh-uh. Bill Franklin simply says, great, congratulations. <laughs> all right. Uh, Edward Losey, oh. famous publicist here in Los Angeles. He and I have known each other, what, 30 years, maybe? Yeah, I mean, yeah. He sort of knows my storied career, mostly on the radio, but sometimes hijinks off and dive bars and, and, and fine bars like the Beverly Hills Polo Lounge, etc. And he's been here. He's been. Laurie Downey Jr., Edward Losey, has been here numerous times. Yeah. Yes. Boy, Edward Losey, the publicist to the stars, my friend, he replied, awesome, congrats. 
What? Now, that's not tongue-in-cheek. That's sincere. Yes. And for those of you listening or watching us on Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube right now, this will all make sense to you in a, in a, a minute or two. Craig Wake, Wyckoff. Craig Wyckoff, my former agent here in Los Angeles for a million years turned rabbi. He was my rabbi for a while and then uh, I learned that he went off the deep end and he's a, a Trump hater. I said, uh, I, I still love you, Craig, but you're no longer my rabbi. And P.S. No, you don't have to be a Jew to have a rabbi. I, I, I love having a rabbi. It's simply a person of higher learning, a, per, a teacher. That's a rabbi. Craig Wyckoff simply said, uh, congratulations, back on the air. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, back on the God. air. Rick Stevens, big congratulations, Matt, exclamation <laughs> times 12. Wow. Jeff Conwell, a sincere well done, Matt. <laughs> uh, these people, none of these people are, are being flippant. These people are being serious when they're saying. Mart, this. Mart, what, what I'm learning here is, is in 2022, sarcasm doesn't exist. The, right. Right. Have you know noticed I, that, Mart? Yeah, and it hasn't for a long time. No, with, it, with a lot of the women that I've dated, they, they, you try sarcasm. First, they first of all, it first, right off the bat, females uh, are, don't appreciate for sarcasm. For the most part, yes, I do. No. Once again, who who do I know that you doesn't say, drink? No, but you said who do I know that doesn't drink? That little Irishman. One Irishman. Yes, I do. No. Yes, the the vast majority of females do not like or appreciate yeah. sarcasm. And Lori does because she's not a female. Yeah. I mean, uh, whoop. did I did I just come out of well? Window? Listen, yes. well, Marty. It's, it's, Lori, I love you. Baby. <laughs> it's day reggae to not be a female or a male. Anything you want. Well, you know what? I woke up this morning and I I felt like uh, well, a vagina would be a nice thing what to have today. Point? So it's a it's a vagina. Uh, well, you're the one who took me off, Lori, by saying, well, not uh, not, not me. All, not all females, no. Yeah, we're not talking about all. We're talking about the vast majority. The vast majority of females. Ooh. Yeah, your argument gets, gets numbingly old, Lori, because it's not an argument. We're talking about the vast numbers of people. And females, by and large, are not sarcastic people. Um, but Jeff Conwell did get it. He said, yes, you're not a funny morning man. Now that's good humor. So see, he gets it. He understood what I was saying in the post. <coughs> Stacia Finley said, could you play some Charlie Daniels? I don't know, Stacia, uh, can I? Uh, Maria D. Arcangelo Lapidus. Oh, God. Uh -oh. <laughs> Who is married to a fine man, a regular on Outlaw Radio for a myriad years. He had to check out. Howard Lapidus, oh, yeah. who I miss and I love dearly. He was Dr. Drew Pinsky's manager and manager to many notables throughout the Tom years. Green, and Tom too. Green. Tom yeah. Green. But some big people. And a good man who passed away way too young. He had to get away from her. He had to. <laughs> it was either divorce or death, and, and he chose death to get away from his uh, his wife, Maria D. Arcangelo Lapidus. She simply, she simply re replied, "That's awesome! Congratulations!" Oh. <coughs> how long? How long has she known? Me and through Howard. Howard, who, by the way, God bless him, was my biggest fan on this morning show I do on another platform. She's listened to the morning show that you do because she's commented to me about it before. Oh, I heard your brother this morning on blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah. Mud fans meet. Uh, yes. Iris. Hate the wall. Iris Hanojosa from Houston. Good gal. A really great gal. But with all sincerity, she said, way to go, Matt. <laughs> hey, people are happy for you. You're, yeah. finally, into, you're finally into radio. Dude. Chris He's Dimitri, right. my buddy from Philadelphia. Oh, yeah. no. Really? Who, who I've known since, what, 2003? I met Chris, yeah. When I was on the air in Philadelphia. Chris Dimitri, my buddy. My liquor swigging, cigar smoking buddy simply says congratulations. <laughs> he doesn't get it either. Uh, but Evan say it. 
Oh, now he's, he's going to get it. He said, I got it. Yeah. That's all. He's That's all. So, so I followed this whole friggin' shebang up on Facebook. <laughs> My personal Facebook page, uh, you'll find it, M-A-T-T, last name E-L-A-N. That's Matt Allen. I said, perhaps if I had written it like this. They all laughed when I said I wanted to be a funny morning uh, show host. Well, they're not laughing now. The one word I did, I w wanted to make it more cerebral, but I guess, and that, my friends, is why in 2022, Outlaw Radio is not gaining the traction on YouTube that it so richly deserves. Now, wh why is that, Mart? Because people are lemmings. No. I was going to say stupid, and I know that I, and well, I, know, I, I know that, and I don't mean that in a negative way. <laughs> All right, so let's let's choose a more diplomat. L Lori's good with uh, diplomacy. Lori Downey Jr. Choose a more diplomatic way of saying people are stupid. They just didn't see the humor in it. They didn't understand see, what you said. See, Lori's very good at this. So I take that back. I'm not saying people are stupid. I am. Okay. Uh, people are stupid. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Friggin' idiots. You pay attention to them? Not talking to you, Billy. <laughs> oh, no. Already? Uh, yeah. I, that was quick. Because, well, the thing is, he doesn't have anything to say unless I speak that he's got to talk to me because well, that's I'm the what? I like I like Billy Dilly. By the way, yeah. here, irritating, here, irritating. Here's a little YouTube uh, 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 cat whisperer thing is getting more hits than any it's of my show. Getting, no, it's not. He's kicking that's ass. Wrong, that's wrong. I've checked out our past shows. There's three. Hey, other humor, other humor. Yeah. Over, over here. So don't That's buy your that. denier. My brother is is humor denier. So don't buy That's that. That's your Billy. denier. Don't buy into that. Right Billy. there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. He let. See, Mart will let his his massive ego get in the way of a good bit. That wasn't a good bit. Okay. If it was a good bit, I wouldn't have let. Yeah, it would have been. It would have been a feasible bit. Nah. But you have, it's just, you're the, the mad humor bomber. You tried it twice. It's like you throw, you throw the bombs yeah. and you explode the humor. Yep. The shrapnel <laughs> just hit my stomach. I feel it right here. Yeah? Oh. Me and Jimmy McEachin, Korean War vet, I th we now both have shrapnel oh, in us. Oh, man. Oh, man. A uh, quick note to you, uh, virtue uh, signaling uh, uh, wearers of masks. You look silly. You, you look silly. And I don't think that you care how you look because you're virtue signaling. Unless you're the youth of today in their, uh, in their 20s, it seems, you're the ones most likely to wear the mask. The real young or the real old. You know, we see some, and uh, Lori and I went to uh, uh, Dennis Zine's uh, birthday party uh, a week ago or so. Yep. And Sergeant Dennis Zine, the last great councilman here in Los Angeles. And in this group of about 30 very nice people, there, were o there was only one couple wearing masks. And they were sweating, and they were complaining about how hot right. they were, and they couldn't breathe. That's what they were saying. Yeah, I wonder why, Lori. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I think, it, could it have something to do with the uh, face wear? <laughs> it could be. Yeah. But they were old. They were, they were old, decrepit-looking, and... That's not nice. It, is decrepit? it correct? Is it correct? Yes, it is correct. Old and decrepit-looking and wearing silly face gear that made them look like idiots. Mm. It's like, what, we're so old, so all of a sudden the mask is going to help us when the mask doesn't truly help no, it doesn't. in any way, shape, or form. You know, and then you'll hear comments or rebuttals such as, well, you know, if it doesn't hurt, well, it, is, it does hurt because, you know, you're sweating like a pig. And you're breathing in your own uh, carbon yeah. dioxide. It's not good for not you. Not only that, your own odors. You know, do we want to do that? No. Well, you know, so. we did have the corona going around again in <laughs> yeah. L.A., and a lot of people got sick, so maybe yeah. they were sick when they arrived and they just wanted to be there. Hey, Laura, I, I know people like this, and you, you don't really think that if they're sick... By the way, they're barely able to walk as it was. Oh, my God. Do you, it's time to go anyway. I mean, you know... 
And uh, Martin, I don't want to agree with you, but you know, there there comes a point. Yeah, man. Right? When you just Let her that, go. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's get rid of Leave her A or leave her B. All yeah. bets are off. Leave Take the masks off. Say good night. Wow. <laughs> right? Have a happy day. Well, the mask things don't work, man. I just got in this conversation with a oh. Lyft, Lyft driver last night about this thing, and he. he well, he, he, but he, he's forced to wear it. No, but no. He goes, Do you mind if I take this off? Good. Are you mad to it? He goes, No, they stopped it now. We don't have to. Oh, anymore. is that right? But he goes, I thought you might, as a customer, I said, no, man. Take, hey, Mark. Here, here's off, the thing. Man. Yeah, if if I if I'm a Lyft driver or an Uber driver, yeah, I think I'm going to wear the mask, and then I will ask the question That's the minute the minute a customer enters the car. Yeah. What if somebody starts sneezing? Like they I sneeze a lot in people's cars. I don't care. You would, haven't people always oh, sneezed oh, around I, you? I, no, I, I, have people always sneeze and, oh. and sneeze into their hands. So, Laura, did you always wear a mask? No, when you were growing up sneezing. Hold oh, oh, on a second. Lori is a non-mask wearer. No, you wearer. didn't. Yeah, but Lori is a non-mask wearer. She had to wear masks in certain circumstances. <laughs> yeah, what but, did you but, say, Marty? I said you had to wear masks. Lori, I'm trying to keep the show intact, so what he said is no bearing on audience uh, entertainment. Mm -hmm. So let's just move on. The, the point being that Lori is a non-mask wearer. She was forced to wear it because of her other gig. I get that. If you're, if you're mandated and you want to keep your gig, although plenty of lawsuits... Because of the forcing of the, the vaccine and the mask wearing, and they're winning. And uh, yeah. not one to boast, but uh, someone in this room predicted that a year ago. Wait for the lawsuits. Oh, yeah, man. And it could be this guy talking right here behind this microphone. I said wait for the lawsuits because they're coming. Because you can't mandate some measles, mumps, Lori, let me ask you, and you may not have the answer to this, but were, were those mandated vax or the, the parents, our parents, because we had the mumps and we had the, the measles vaccination, but was that a mandate or just simply the smart thing to do and our parents said, yeah, let's no, do that? that was a mandate. And, and as we're finding today that in the wastewater in New York, there's polio. There, there was polio, yeah. actually, the virus in the wastewater. So anyone that didn't get that shot is going to get very, very sick. Yeah. You know, but they were mandated back in the day. Everyone that didn't get that shot is going to get very, very sick. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to call BS on that. Well, I no. got them all. Polio? Yeah. BS waiting no, around no, no, the water. Hold on. Hold on. Talking about polio. I know hold what on. polio is, Lori. I have my I have Okay, my what booster. is polio, Marty? I have my booster. I don't know, Lori. What's arm? polio with you? Uh, Let's go to break. Oh we're, running, we're running late. Sounded great. God. I got a lot to get to. Including uh, healthcare workers fired over a vaccine mandate, the aforementioned, and awarded $10 million in the settlement. God bless them. God bless them is right. Plus, uh, I don't know who returned my call. Was that uh, Tony? Oh, it is Tony. He said, Miss you too, because I, ha I have something specific I want to talk to him about. I hope he's available. The great and ubiquitous Tony Orlando. You know him. He's a, he's a legend. Maybe. Perhaps. Next. When we return on Outlaw Radio. On uh, YouTube, it's Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio.
You're listening to OutlawRadioLive.com. And in front of us on YouTube, it's Magic Matt Outlaw Radio. The way folks will be right there. Academic staff and PhD students worked around the clock seven days a week for nine years. And today, we deliver broadcasting from atomic scale components, 21st century technology, talk stars, and subliminal messaging. Motivating, stimulating, mildly erotic, 24 7. Outlaw Radio. Yeah, we mean it when we I'm say like, you mask wearers look silly. You look silly in their masks. <laughs> Welcome back to the Big Dog and Broad Chasing Outlaw Radio. Yeah, we do all this, uh, the, the, well, the hijinks and the fun from an 1876 Virginia City, Nevada style bar in the hills of the San Fernando Valley, where it's about 120 degrees out there. And the pool's looking better than ever, right, Moore? Gosh. Swimming pool's looking better than ever. It's got like a silky... Yeah, dive right in. <laughs> it's got a silky foam on the top when I walked in. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, a swimming pool you'd find at a, at a porno uh, <laughs> yeah. set. Yeah. Yeah. And then I want to be the first one to say... I have blonde yeah. hair to say, I leave it. Yeah. First one to say, I'm really glad to see you here this week because I thought the cold was going to kill you last oh, week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then you, you survived it. Rodney Allen Rippey showed up and oh. brought over... Brought over this Canadian mist. Who drinks Canadian mist? <laughs> right, hey. the Alan Rippey does. By the way, the cough will stay with you. It'll, you know, it's just something that stays oh, yeah, with that you. Yeah, that goes for like weeks. Oh yeah, but but this is probably the third or fourth time I've had the cold. And was I tested? No. So it may not have been the cold, but it's got to be the cold, you're, don't you think? Yeah, you're. I mean, if you're a betting man, gun to your head, Mart, was it the cold? Oh well, I've had it a couple got, times. Got to be the cold. Yeah, I'm not. I have home test kits I've never used. Oh, please. Well, yeah, well, it's so stupid. Yeah, they were sent to me for free, but I've never used them. Healthcare workers uh, fired over vaccine mandate awarded $10 million in settlement. Nicely done. Illinois healthcare workers, they were fired or otherwise impacted by their hospital's COVID 19 vaccine mandate, will receive $10 million. Does it say how many people the 10 million is spread through? You know, usually the, the attor- if it's a class action, the attorneys come out uh, s- just smelling Wait. like a rose. Uh, let this case be a warning to employers that violated title, uh, whatever, Matt uh, Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, the group behind the lawsuit, said it is especially significant, gratifying, that this first uh, class-wide, yeah, so it is, uh, COVID settlement protects health care workers. And that's the attorney, of course, uh, behind this. Yeah, who so is, <laughs> has a brand new yacht uh-huh. and a Ferrari. <laughs> and, the, and the workers are probably getting up with, end up with a $10 Ten check Ten bucks each, each yeah. 12 bucks yeah. each. The case centers around workers yeah. at North Shore Uni- uh, University Health System who filed a lawsuit in October 21, uh, claiming their employer legally refused to grant any religious exemptions to a COVID-19 vaccine mandate. That's illegal. Yeah. Exactly. We've known that's illegal. It continues to be illegal. Legal. Yep. And the settlement approved in the Illinois Northern District Court will result in 473 employees of the system. So that's 473, and it's $10 million. Ah, and, the attorney, and the attorney fees. Oh, that's right. 60% at least to the attorneys. Right. So what does that leave? If we're doing the right math on that, that's $4 million uh, spread through still, 473 employees. So it's all right. So it's still about $22 <laughs> each. <laughs> 
Uh, Matt, I, congratulations on your morning show, by the way. I just wanted to tell you that. Thank you. I yep. appreciate that yeah. very much. Yeah, the morning show I've been doing for 18 years. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You must be a Facebook friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you who just tuned in have no idea what my brother is talking about, uh, You can. it's up there on my Facebook page at M-A-T-T-A-L-A-N. That's my name, my personal Facebook page, Matt Allen. Um, the meek, uh, they are uh, inheriting the earth. Uh, before I go on with this, this and I, I got to barrel down on this. These, some of these YouTubers drive me nuts. There's this sort of Asian-y guy, and I don't know, you know, what his ethnicity is, but he's, he's, I know there's some Asian in there, right? And it's called Vegas D-Tech. Vegas D Tech, and he's got spiky hair, sort of like Billy Idol back in the day, or probably today. Yeah, but, I think Billy but, still has that hair. And he walks around Lake Mead in uh, in uh, out on the outskirts of Vegas, and he does this once a week to check the levels. Yeah, he is the most inarticulate boob, and he calls it Vegas D Tech, as though he's a tech guy, but. His use of the English language drives me nuts and redundant beyond belief. And he'll do 20 minutes and walk around. And this guy just breathing in the desert, walking around Lake Mead, has several thousand people watching this. The meek are inheriting the earth. And you don't see it, Mart, because you're looking at me, but Mark C.G. Boyer has a big smile on his face because he likes the fact the meek are inheriting the earth. You like that, Mark? Oh, of course okay. he does. Yeah. That's him. I love it. That's I love that. I love that whole that, that thing. Now, please, teacher, tell me what to do. Oh, but this v Tech guy, man, he took this spiky hair. What's his name? And Wonder Hussy, I get that. She does yeah. some interesting things. She goes to ghost towns and hikes way up in the mountains, and I find that interesting. But Lake Mead every stinking week to check the levels? And then he'll talk out of both sides of his mouth while well, it's down about two inches. Well, what I meant to say was it's uh, it's up two inches because we had some rain. Yeah. And so, and first of all, and it's all based on doom and gloom. Well, the water's coming back now. There was a flash flood the other day. Yeah. They, they dumped a lot of water back. Yeah, in the and the, wa the water's coming back. Ah, yeah. uh, that's a shame. We need more dead bodies. Detect, Thank you, Mark. Detect might be detective. Yeah, short for detective. Them. Oh my God! Oh, L I think Lake Mead Detective. See, see, I'll tell you what, <laughs> Mart Mart T loves YouTube even more than I enjoy it. I think he spends every waking hour on YouTube, and so he knows that he can decipher things yeah. like this. It's like, okay, you give me the puzzle. <laughs> if it has anything to do with YouTube, I, listen, I'll figure this thing out. Oh, I'm joined at the hip to YouTube. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I no think doubt. that's what it is, Detective. Yeah. yeah, I never would have thought. I never yeah. that would not have come to I've my seen, mind. I've seen people use that. That before that's why I, I, I oh. <laughs> <laughs> by the way the uh, US District uh, Judge John uh, Ness who was appointed by former President Donald Trump he's the uh, one that approved that settlement of 10 million dollars to those folks uh, forced to get the vaccine and uh, and congratulations to those people in Illinois uh, for weeks infectious disease experts told the public monkeypox is largely transmitted by skin-to-skin -skin contact. However, researchers now believe monkeypox is spread through anal and oral sex between men. An expanding cadre of experts has come to believe that sex between men itself, both anal as well as oral inter intercourse, is likely the main driver I may not touch my monkey. Of global monkeypox transmission, the skin contact that comes with sex, these experts say, is probably much less of a risk factor. NBC reported this. Hmm. Would you like to touch my monkey? Biden. Is that guy <laughs> still breathing? Hmm. He's uh, riding a bicycle. Yeah. Biden. <sighs> takes this uh, gender uh, th war to the school lunch line. This is thuggery, strong-arm tactics, what's going down here. 
Even in America, there are children who only eat decent meals at school through their free or reduced lunch programs. Now, I don't know what the percentages are on this. I do know that this came from MSN. You think it's higher than that? No, much higher than what it was back in the day. Uh, Higher meaning what, Lori? So when we were going to school yes. many, many years ago, they had that program. Maybe <laughs> one or many, two many, yeah. families needed it. Today, it's almost everybody. Yeah. and it, See, Laura, because it's not about need. Once you start doling out free stuff, yep. more people latch onto it like the, the breast of a mother, and they won't let go. I saw kids back in the 90s, their parents were latching onto this when yeah. they didn't need it at all. Of course, it's called indoctrination, and it's it's. It's all about you as a child learning early that government is good. Yeah. They will take care of you. Take you know, anything free and enjoy it. I grew up thinking, you know, feeling bad for those kids that needed that that help through the government, the assistance that enabled them to eat. You know, I right. would give them I, I would give them my food if they wanted it. You know, I could go a day without friggin' eating at school. You know, much like I can, you know, so many people on planes, it's like the first thing they do when they're up in the air, it's like they start eating. Mark. It's a, no, no, that's anywhere. Yeah. That's a Greyhound bus. That's a taxi. That is, if if he were to hike, that'd be a hike. He'd yeah. be eating and hiking. He'd yeah, have he, Doritos in one hand and, and, and a friggin' bologna sandwich in the other. Yeah. So, yes, there are those people where it's all about eating. Yeah. And, and I love food as much as the next fella. I love great food. But my God, my world is not gauged on what I'm going to eat, usually. <laughs> some some day some days I do look forward to a little something, you know. Well, I mean, it's, it's it's very important to Mark, and I understand that because it's just something he's got. Why you know? are you saying because Mark C. G. Boyer has no life, and that's all he has to look forward to? <laughs> no, no are you not so. are you not saying that? No. A little bit. You are saying. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I love you, baby. Yeah, so strong arm <laughs> tactics uh, by uh, this okay. fake president, uh, piece of crap, uh, Biden. I better watch, boy, I better watch what I say, yeah, man. Here we go again. Uh, unfortunately, uh, forcing its radical gender theory on everyone, the Biden administration is asking nonprofit private schools to trade their values for literal lunch money. What? Yes. This scandal recently played out in a low-income community in Tampa, Florida. Children who attend Grant Park Christian Academy Mm. do so by receiving financial assistance from scholarship organizations. That's from the church. They also receive free meals from the school's lunch program. Right. The school receives funding to pay for these lunches from the Department of Agriculture through the National School Lunch Program, which Commissioner Nikki Freed operates. Because of its Christian basis, Grant Park Christian Academy does not agree with the Biden administration's right. redefinition to include sexual orientation and gender identity. Absolutely. Now, even private religious schools must forbid sex-specific restrooms or dress codes. If they refuse, they are at risk of losing access to funding that makes children's lunches possible. One has if- nothing to do with the other. If that ain't strong arm wow. friggin' tactics, I don't know what is, man. You do as I say, Police. or you'll get no food. You sons of bitches running this country. Freed's office told the school that it either had to comply with all federal program regulations, or lo- which means same-sex bathrooms. Just... The most ridiculous, it is it is the abnormal wanting Americans to accept abnormal as normal. It's called indoctrination, and it's a bad, bad thing for the United States of America and the world. And anyone with sense, and we still have numerous folks who live in this great country of ours with sense, know to protest and to be at those school board meetings and say, no, this is bull crap. 
same-sex bathrooms in a school. That, that is insane. By the way, yeah, it, you know, if I were a, a, a kid, if I were that kid now, I'd love it. If I if I could share a bathroom with a girl, wouldn't you? You wouldn't well, have a problem yeah, with that. I, I but it doesn't go both ways. I wouldn't like it. Of course not, Lori, because you're sort of a female. Sort of. <laughs> like like our children. I, w- I wouldn't want that for Oh, them. my God. I wouldn't allow it. No. Wouldn't allow it. No. You're going to have to hold it until 4 in the afternoon. <laughs> with the help of Alliance <laughs> Defending Freedom Attorneys, uh, by the way, good people, school filed a lawsuit against uh, Freed and President Joe Biden. Uh, the school also applied for an exemption to Biden's program. These are the things that are going on, though. These are the strong-arm tactics. You either accept this bi-sexual, uh, uh, this LGBTQ ridiculousness. Or we will not or feed you. We will not feed you or fund you. Yeah. It's a sickness, my friends. And it's not what we need or want in the good old USA. A lot to get to when we return on Outlaw Radio.
is Outlaw Radio. A few minutes ago, top of the show, I was bitching and moping and moping and hoping and bitching about our, uh, well, the fact that it's uh, it's taken a while to get some traction on our uh, YouTube channel, Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio, and uh, not one to boast, I'm no dummy. I mean, I get it. When I tune into a YouTube channel and there's a 35-second bit featuring a scantily clad woman and it has two million hits? Yeah. <laughs> Gives me a little clue as to what folks are looking for on YouTube. Or, or a non-professional dancer who happens to be cute, nice little bod, and she doesn't dance for 62 seconds. Some made-up dance. 48 million oh, yeah. viewers. Yeah. And here we are. Going out on a limb and giving you substantive, some real information, things that will change America, and you got these scantily clad broads who are raking up. I mean, how much money do you make if you have 40 million YouTube viewers? A lot. Right? Yeah. For doing what, Mart? There were, for dancing? For, fi- for, for fishing with a bikini on? Yes, for fishing. Yeah. And, I, and I get sucked into that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you start watching me, you can't, you can't help it, man. <laughs> you can't, as a, I'm a fisherman. As a red-blooded, heterosexual male, yeah. if you see a scantily clad woman that is endowed mm-hmm. up above, yeah, yeah. and she's on a boat... Fishing or hunting or whatever, well, riding a dirt bike. Any like, sort of outs- outside is. activities. Riding yeah. a camel, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Then we're, then, and you ever skip ahead, you know, going oh, yeah. for the, right? Yeah. If yeah. they take too long in I'm, between. I'm a YouTube professional, man. I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know how to get through all that crap. But, <laughs> but, but there, was a, there was a woman with the same bitch you had, and I, I meant to forward this With the you. same bit? The what same, bit? No, the same bitch that you have. Oh. About, about. Oh, is that right? She thinks, she goes, I think... Oh, she goes, because YouTube is not posting all my likes and all my yeah, stuff, Right. I'm going to tell you guys, blah, blah, blah. It's blah. all she about algorithms, yeah. and, and YouTube is screwing our algorithms, man, yeah. going out of our way. We happen to lean, dare I say, on the right when it comes to politics on this show. We lean to the right. The YouTube powers that be don't necessarily lean to the right. Yeah, no. In fact, they may be diametrically opposed to that concept. My thanks to Steve Abbott, our buddy in Wisconsin, who listens to us on great radio stations like WSAU. He said, and he's he's watching and listening today. He's watching Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube. He said, Matt, on the front of lack of subs on YouTube, I think of a pearl of wisdom of a final page editorial in Hot Rod Mag by David Freiberger. He is a highly respected man in the hot rodding world, also a cigar smoker, if I might add. It was one of his last, uh, one of his last before quitting a few months ago, before quitting. I think he's saying quitting his YouTube channel. Mm. He references how everybody asks him how to be an influencer. Paraphrasing, he says, just be a young, attractive female is a major help. That's it. Do the math. Demographics, brother. Can we get Laura to wear a bikini? Next we've, been, week? we've been working on that for uh, several months. Oh, okay. We have not succeeded, obviously. If you're watching us on YouTube, that ain't no bikini. A uh, lot to get to in the uh, the next two hours of Outlaw Radio, live from the Lighting Up Lounge on YouTube, Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio, and everywhere else. That, oh, and smash the like button. But more than that, yeah, smash the like button. Whatever. And like the smash button. Yeah, whatever. Do whatever you need to do. Have a big cocktail right now. We'll be much more entertaining. Everybody's got a thing that's in the world and the Always reaching out in vain Just taking the things not worth having But don't you worry about a thing Don't you worry about a thing Mama Cause I'll be standing Check it out. You say your style of life's a drag, and that you must go other places. But just don't you feel too bad when you get fooled by smiling faces? Don't. 
Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing, my love. Cause I'll be standing on the side when you check it. I'll be standing on the
you know, we're the last line of defense. And really, the comedians are the last uh, the voice of truth in this whole thing. Hi, this is Meatloaf. Okay, kids, you know what time it is? You know what time it is? It's Outlaw Radio Time! This is Sean Young on Outlaw Radio. <laughs> hey, this is Shelley Berman on Outlaw Radio. Listen, come on, listen to me or listen to Matt. It, if you like being bored, it's great for you. <laughs> it's Robert Hayes. I'm here on Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt, a.k.a. The Weasel. We are here to drink. We're here to smoke. We're here to interrupt. You may drink. You may smoke. You may interrupt. But I'm here to f- live from the Lighten Up Lounge. This is Tom Delavine saying, "This is Outlaw Radio." Hi, this is Chuck Woolery at Lighten Up Lounge on Outlaw Radio. There's lots of fun, guys. Be back two and two. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and you're listening to Outlaw Radio, where we smoke, we drink, and occasionally we bother people who look old and weak. Hi, this is Rick Dees with Magic Matt, a.k.a. Mr. Cigar, in the Lighten Up Lounge. We drink, we smoke, we... Interrupt. Before I get to, uh, well, this important stuff, I want to readdress this Biden thing and the fact that he's keeping uh, food, government food from school children. If, of course, the school does not agree with the gender identity and all of this ludicrous Sick, BS, these notions that are killing America, a man is not a man, a woman is not a woman. Uh, you must have uh, dual bathrooms. The whole thing is just smacks of ridiculousness. Even five years ago, we would have laughed in the face of this. But the left, man, you give uh, give them an inch. And now they, uh, the Biden administration, they seem to have forgotten that banishing sex-specific restrooms might seem inclusive to not even a handful of children. What, one, two, or three? And then the others are just sort of tagging along because they don't want to be an outcast. It's called indoctrination. And you're discriminating against the masses. But they don't care. You're making the masses uncomfortable. But it's all about making that that small, vocal minority happy. And that's what's happening today in the United States of America. And uh, and they want to withhold funds. No no food for you. Uh, that is so sick. If you don't man. buy into our friggin' yeah. ridiculous dogma. Uh, in just a minute here, Minneapolis Teachers Union Agreement. You're gonna you're gonna want to hear this. Stipulates white teachers be laid off first. I heard about this. Regardless of yep. seniority. Yep. I did too. If you're white, but boy, that's not discrimination. No. Nothing racial about that, huh? Uh, Kirk Cameron blasts Hollywood cowardice. After studios reject latest Lifemark movie, uh, Kirk Cameron, who's been rather vocal and seems to be a pretty darn good guy, slammed Hollywood Studios, calling their lack of willingness to distribute his newest movie, Cowardice. Cameron's latest film, Lifemark, explores life and adoption as an audience journeys with an 18-year-old young man as he meets his birth mother, discovers a staggering truth from the past. Cameron says, I thought it was amazing. Speaking of Hollywood's rejection, you know, that's just good old-fashioned cowardice, you know? Even the so-called faith divisions of studios would rather pass from tens of millions of dollars and support horror, violence, and drag queen movies than risk doing anything that celebrates life. He said, this film 
is not about abortion. Hollywood Studios, they told him they steered clear because of, uh, well, of course, the Roe v. Wade thing. They won't risk anything that even smells like it, Cameron said. They'll pass up tens of millions of dollars. I just think that shows there's not a lot of backbone there. You know what? I, I, That's what, Kirk Cameron. What was he from? Kirk oh, Cameron. yeah. Like, uh, Facts are Live, one of those TV yeah. shows. And he's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. And he's been around for a, now a gazillion years. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Ted Bear, I love this man from the uh, Hollywood Movie Guide Awards. Uh, he's a man of faith. He's a man that I adore. And uh, and he's a funny guy <laughs> and sarcastic as heck. I, I will tell you that. that. That's one of the things you may not know about Ted Bear. So this Kirk Cameron thing, yeah, what's your take on this, Ted? Well, I was with Kirk a week and a half ago, and <laughs> it's a great press release that he put out. We wrote about it at Movie Guys. Org, and it's getting audience because he's having to distribute the movie himself. And what a better way to get audience than to raise a red flag and call everybody to come and support the movie. And he's getting a, a week uh, from Fathom, which is absolutely incredible. And it's also edited by a friend of mine, Alex Kendrick, who uh, was my radio engineer years ago. But you know, the fact of the matter is, a year ago, there were a lot of big movies, including Black Widow, that were pro-life. Uh, so that has all changed in a year. Uh, the faith-based divisions, they want, they're doing other movies out at the same time, um, including Strong Fathers, Strong Daughters, which is a wonderful movie. So, you know, you have to take some of this with a grain of salt. Now, I know you don't want to do that. I mean, the truth of the matter is... <laughs> you, know I every do. studio, you know I don't want every, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so every, every studio has different uh, divisions in it. And I hear people all the time saying, you know, I went to Universal and uh, they don't want Christian movies. But actually, I know the person at Universal wants Christian movies. And I, or they say, I went to Netflix and they, don't want, and they hired somebody from Canada. It was a very wonderful woman who's in charge of Christian movies, and they've got some good Christian movies. So you got to find the right person in the studio. I mean, Warner Brothers, for instance, has 61,000 people in L.A. If you find the wrong person, they're going to say, no, you got to find the right person. But I, I don't think Kurt is that naive, you know, growing pains. He's yeah. been in the industry a long time. He's had a lot of successes. I think he knows how complex the industry is. I was just with him at Marshall Foster's funeral. He gave the best sermon I've heard in a long time. I didn't think he could do it. Kirk, so wait, I Kirk, think he's gave, doing this. Kirk, Kirk think, gave the sermon? Yeah. Oh, I that's think he's beautiful. Doing, I think he's doing a, a publicity mm. gig, and uh, I think it's going to draw him a lot of viewers for the week that it's out in Fathom, and we'll review the movie. So at that time, we can tell you whether the studios made a good decision or a bad decision. So this may turn out to be a positive for Kirk Cameron. Do you, do you think that he will uh, curry more favor doing it this way or having a studio behind him? Uh, you know, that's hard to say. I mean, Mel Gibson was so blessed uh, <laughs> when... Uh, when this, I, I hate to say this because in the middle of losing my wife, my best friends who made me feel better were my Jewish friends because they know the condition and everything. But there was a Jewish organization that blasted uh, the Passion of the Christ and Mel Gibson saying it was anti-Semitic. And that just brought, a, everybody admits it, even in the industry, that that brought a flood of people until so the movie ended up doing $600 million. Yeah. Sometimes that, you know, sort of contrary PR works, as you know. It actually attracts a crowd, especially when it appeals to uh, people with strong faith and values. Yeah, hey. So we'll see what happens. I, I can't make predictions. I don't have a crystal ball. I've told you that. But I love Kirk. I love uh, Alex Kendrick. I think they're a good team. Yeah. And I imagine it's going to be a good movie. Ted Bear, I, I only visited a fortune teller once. And yeah, yeah, and about a minute into it, she said, I, I don't see anything because you make my crystal ball smell funny. Hey. So, uh, yeah. Well, you know, people buy into this stuff all the time, fortune telling, and there's a thing called the Barnum effect that they use adjectives that are so applicable yes. to so many different people. Of course. But you adopt it. You think it applies, and then you live your life that way. Mm -hmm. So. Huh. 
Don't listen to him. <laughs> no, it's a, it's it's a it's an old scam, a ding dong. I mean, I've been you know I've been reading people for entertainment on stage for years, Ted. It is man, it's such a scam, a ding dong. You know, Yuri Geller, uh, the the man that bend the spoon. I knew and so, Yuri Geller. I knew him. And by, and, and, and by the way, and you we talked about that. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Ted Bear, Yuri Geller, not a not a bad guy. He was simply a magician yeah. that wouldn't admit to being a magician. That's all that was. You know, that he well, would he was he, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he was being promoted, you know, I this is the background before I came to Christ. He was being promoted by Andre uh, Andre who was uh, an occult leader in New York City, uh, and had a beautiful home up in upstate New York and uh, a lot of women in it. But anyway, uh, we won't talk about that. Well, <laughs> I think we should. Leader, Damn. Like many other cult leaders, and he would parade Yuri Geller around to these shows. Yeah. And, um, and of course, he got exposed, so that was it. And you and I both know the magician that uh, exposed him. He used to do yep. little bits for Movie Guide. Oh, no, well, I'll tell, you, I'll, I'll tell you how he was exposed, and, and if, if you recall, if we're talking about the same story, it was on the uh, the Tonight Show with the last right. the last great talk late night talk show host Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson was a tremendous magician. That man, until the day he died, could do card manipulation that was beyond belief. He was he was a mechanic, and so he knew and loved magic. My buddy Milt Larson, who owns the Magic Castle. Uh, the private club here on uh, 7001 Franklin Avenue in Hollywood. He was buddies with Johnny Carson and and the amazing Randy, who I met when I was a child, a mere child at the castle, Randy right. was the debunker of those, right? You know, you yeah, knew no, Randy. Randy called up Movie Guy to say, could I write an article for you? And Is that right? A couple of articles. Uh, yeah. that, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. And um, we all know more about Randy than we should, so let's forget that. No, no, no. Isn't that funny? See, see, there's there's nothing. Ted and I, I don't think we've ever really talked about the, the amazing Randy. Mm -hmm. But but it's funny that Ted and I, we we know the same weird stuff, don't we, Ted? <laughs> yeah, we do. And, but we didn't know each other for years. So. No, I know that. <laughs> and, and that's a dirty, rotten shame, my friend. But, yeah, and, and P.S., what you're speaking of when it comes to the amazing Randy, I only learned that about three or four years ago, I never knew that when I was a 15-year-old at the Magic Castle. Enough said, Ted? Yeah, enough said. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> well, he wrote a good article for Movie Guide about uh, exposing Yuri Geller, and I, you know, I've been on that side. So yeah, uh, and, and actually, I liked you and Andrea Perharich and some of those people. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what. Uh, Amazing Randy was a brilliant guy and a brilliant performer, and, and God rest his soul. Uh, Ted Bear, yeah. I, I love you dearly. I can't wait to see you. Uh, anything you want to add to this, Mart? My brother Mart's here. Who you've never met Ted in person, and I, I think no. I think it's about time you you found I look a little. Forward to meeting him. Well, yes. See, Ted, what, what, hey, Ted. if anyone if anyone can can throw that twist of fate in there and bring a man to God, you could do it with my brother Mart. Okay, first off, I already am. I, I believe in God. I, okay. You don't have to do that, Ted. That's over. And Ted, <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Ted, I, Ted, I take it back. Ted, you don't have to do that. Ted, by the way, uh, what, what okay, name? Okay, I, I confess I don't have to do it, but I do have to. Hey, we need about two minutes. I've, to I've already been. My I've, 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 I was, birthday party. I was saved long before Matt was. Anyway, okay, um, okay. okay. long okay. before. I don't. I, don't I was think, twelve years old. Bible camp. Yeah, I was saved. I, I don't so. think. I don't think it's about when. I okay. mean, Ted, I win. Ted. Ted was a miscreant uh, for many of the years of his life. Right? Were you not, yeah, Ted Bear? That's why I knew all these people with uh, nice big mansions on the Hudson with uh, lots of uh, That's right. hot and gold running girls, and beautiful <laughs> yeah. women. Yeah. Not born again. Uh, born. Born. So God has blessed me. He yeah. redeemed me. He renewed me, and He introduced me to Magic Math, which well, made life better. That's right. awesome. What you know, going to say? It goes Ted? both ways. I don't know. You, you, you're Marty? really, you're really going down that rabbit hole, Lori Downey Jr. Almost. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want to. 
Wait, was there a point, Mart? No. Okay, <laughs> see? I, I knew that. Yeah. All right. Uh, my my lovely and beautiful man known as Ted Bear, I, God brought us together. Thank you for being in my life. You, uh, you make me happier every time I think about you. Well, you'll make me happier if you say movieguide.org. <laughs> there it is, movieguide.org. It's yes. worth your time. The best. Come on, you <laughs> you folks. Shameless publicity like Kirk Cameron. <laughs> yeah. oh, I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's, Ted, that's Ted Barrett. Oh, Ted. He didn't mean to say that. No, Kirk, Kirk, Kirk doesn't have a career in Hollywood anymore, oh, so it doesn't matter what he's doing. He's, no, he's no, but, millions of people. Yes, and, and it's because of that. It's because he's not a, he's not a big lefty idiot. <laughs> That's why his career has dissolved. It's true. That's the way it works. All right. The great. But you know, his cat, the, the teachings he does on Christianity, and he came to Christ through Marshall Foster, are really excellent. I think he has millions of followers, probably more yeah. than followers than most movies get when they get released in theaters. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yep. Ted Bear. Dr. Ted Bear, I love you. God bless. Have a beautiful weekend. God Bye bless you. Have Happy a birthday to um, yeah. What, 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 what did you call her? His daughter. What did Lori say? Evie. <laughs> Evie. To Evie. What did Lori say? I can't hear her. I said happy birthday to Evie. Evie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, we're going to take her to an expensive restaurant, and I told him I'd pay for it. So oh, I'm very oh, Ted, Ted, that's got to hurt. It's got to hurt. It does. <laughs> you know being it does. Being a father is a difficult, difficult job. <laughs> Almost as hard as being a mother. God bless you guys. God, God bless, bless you, Ted right. Bear. Almost as much as being a mother. i got to tell you. I love that guy. Yes. Every time we get together with him, he gets more, he gets more sarcastic. He's so funny. Well, the the fact is that he puts he not only puts up with me, but yeah. but I get the impression he adores me and my oh. sarcasm and the fact that I'm he's always smiling. I'm a bit of a fire starter at you these get-togethers. And you do? <laughs> yeah. And you know, instead of him kicking me out, he he'll oh, just no. he, he smiles. He just smiles. He you could almost sense makes him wants, happy. He wants to give me, give me a standing ovation yeah. when I'm taken he, down. He's saying stuff that he would like to say, but he can't. Oh, but he does. He does. Yeah. You know, he'll, oh, he he'll, he'll sit there, he smokes cigars and drinks whiskey with us. And uh, and for those of you who think that uh, men or women of faith don't drink and smoke, you know, this you're so wrong. Yes. I have a buddy that's a deacon and he's a big boozer. Oh, yeah. Well, do, do you remember he, when he, you You know why he's a boozer? Why? That deacon has to be a boozer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's been through a few. Do you remember oh, yeah. when you Lo first lo met him? Lovely scalawags. Uh, what, Ted Bear? At yes. The, yeah, at the Movie Guide Awards yes. in, in uh, Universal Studios. And, and he was so great, like, when they oh, weren't yeah. shooting that, the Movie Guide Awards, and he got right on point. Yeah. And you said... I'm, yeah. I'm going to meet this guy. No, I told Lori, we were sitting there at dinner. I'd never met that man before, but I, I love the fact that as he was hosting this uh, this gala, I mean, this is, uh, you know, tuxedo and dre dressed to the teeth. And Stevie Wonder was there that night, right? Yeah, yeah and fi Olivia Newton-John. In yeah. fact, you know, we, we have time to do a little homage to Olivia Newton-John, but, but I love the I fact so. that he broke the, the fourth wall for the TV audience watching him on stage and he he was pissed off about some technical stuff and made no bones about it on stage and that's what I whispered to Lori oh that that guy is me I got to meet that man and that's when I waited around and we got together and it's been a great friendship yes. a, a beautiful friendship yep hey Lori, find that Olivia I it's under it. uh, I wasn't planning on doing this but we didn't get it. to it last week because Rodney Allen Rippy the Jack in the Box kid stole the thunder from Olivia Newton John yeah. It's Ow. it's like Michael Jackson dying at the same time as Farrah Fawcett and stealing all of Farrah Fawcett's I know. fame. Yeah. But Olivia Newton-John and you, my brother Mart knew Gee. one of the dudes <sighs> from Greece that married her sister. Yes. Verona. <clears throat> that they moved to Palm Springs, married his sister, her sister. Uh, but the man that you knew. Jeff Conaway. Jeff Conaway, not Conway. Conway. Please, please stop saying Conway, yeah. folks. Jeff Conaway from Taxi, uh -huh. Greece, a talented guy. He wanted to, and the, he, we used to sit in his office, and he'd tell me, he would tell me some t deep, dark stuff about the set of Greece and Olivia yeah. and John. He said that Travolta he got sick and tired of John not pursuing in his, uh, not the acting part of him being the girlfriend. 
But he said, oh, I like her. You don't stay not, away from Not her. pursuing what? She, Olivia, because Jeff liked Olivia. Who, off, who would not camera. love Olivia so Newton-John? He said, look, he goes, man, I don't know what your problem is, man, but if you're not going to move in on Yeah, that, if you're not going to pursue her, okay. And so John goes, you stay away from her. And he goes... You know what? I still think John's gay. <laughs> Jeff told me this, man. He goes, I, I think he's gay because, man, why wasn't he doing something off camera with, you know, with her? In her let, let me just say, and this may this, it make me sound like a caveman, like I care, but I, I must tell you that if you have a chance with Olivia Newton-John right. back in that day yeah. in the 70s, yeah. you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, and so well, what a be- and by the way, I, I always had this sense about her, and I finally met her at the Movie Guide Award. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Ted Bear, uh, what a beautiful woman from the inside that's out. That's what I've heard, and that's what beautiful Jeff said too. woman. Unlike her s- sister, that Jeff said, "Yeah, I married her sister, yeah. Rona, moved to Palm Springs, went to Palm Springs, and she, t- I made her a citizen. She went, she got her papers. Yeah, she stole, she took every dime and the house. Yeah, yeah but that's day. that's not just her. That's well, females <laughs> in general. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, this will take us to break but a little homage some of olivia's greatest songs and songs that'll probably snap your brain and say oh my god i forgot about that Uh, one a lot to get to uh rest in peace the beautiful beautiful olivia newton john god bless her and we'll be this after back on outlaw radio Love. 
Aggressive has a new home. You're listening to Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. A lot of stuff going down in Wisconsin these days. A lot of friends in Wisconsin. A lot of beautiful people listening to Outlaw Radio in Wisconsin and watching us on YouTube, Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube. And we welcome you, especially if you're a, not especially, but if you're a new listener or viewer to Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio. Uh, we, are, uh, we are growing by leaps and bounds, subscriber base, 
at least a new subscriber every week. So, uh -huh. how Matt, about that? What, Laura? I want to welcome yeah. a new subscriber to Outlaw Radio. Her name is Nancy Block. So, welcome, Nancy Block, to Outlaw Radio. See? Told you. Yes, I did tell you. Nancy, good job. Now, tell your friends, baby. <laughs> yes, All I right. did. Nancy Block, thank you, hon. Uh, Wait, did I say hon? Well, if she's listening or watching us, I think she can uh, put up with being called hon. <laughs> Yeah, Nancy Block. Is that her name? Nancy Block? Where's Nancy she from? Block. God bless her. Uh, Minneapolis Teachers Union Agreement, probably from Wisconsin, because uh, it it's turning out that's where all the good people live. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's, it really that's is. the only listeners we have. Yeah. I mean, Wisconsin. No, Wisconsin. I'll, ta I'll take every single one yeah. of them. Because they're the good people. And if you don't think that Trump won in Wisconsin, oh, you are out of your friggin' mind. Yeah. Uh, Minneapolis Teachers Union agreement stipulates white teachers be laid off first, regardless of seniority. Do you hear about this, Lori? I didn't. Of course you didn't, because you watch the local news. Don't, they they yeah. don't report on things like this because it's adverse to, of course, their storyline. An agreement between the Minneapolis Teachers Union and the school district states that white teachers will be laid off before teachers of color, regardless of seniority. Yeah. Not wow. racist. No. The agreement, which was reached uh, to end a two-week teacher strike last spring, says that starting this school year, if accessing a teacher who is a member of a population underrepresented among licensed teachers in the site, the district shall access the net, which means get rid of, yeah. uh, the least senior teacher who is not a member of an underrepresented population. So if you're white, out of there. Accessing teachers is the process by which staff are reduced at a particular school due to a drop in enrollment, funding, or other reasons. By the way, stats are bearing this out. Um, I think in the United States of America over the last year, uh, two million less kids enrolled in public school. Now, you can't tell me that that has something to do with a woke mob and these beautiful parents won't take it anymore. So a lot of homeschooling going on. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, this agreement further goes on to say that when reinstating teachers, the district shall uh, prioritize the recall of a teacher who is a member of a population underrepresented among licensed teachers in the district. Uh, there was a blog post on Teachers Union uh, website, claims parents make it their job to undermine teachers. Think about that. Teachers Union website claims parents make it their job to undermine teachers. How about that, Lori? Okay, I, I'm just, it's a gray area for me because like in the last couple of years, I learned... Do you have a microphone up that shouldn't be up because I'm hearing noise that shouldn't be there? No. Okay. Let me just look. Uh-huh. I'm looking. All right. No, I don't. Okay. It's all the same. So the gray area, Lori? Oh, the gray area is, um, you know, I learned the last couple of, over the last couple of years that Armenian families, that culture, doesn't look at themselves as white. They look at me as a white person. Right. They don't say that they are white. They're Armenian. They're not white. Right. They're, they're, yeah. But does the same go for Italian families? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but Italian, mm -hmm. Italians don't think of themselves that way. No. Well, because a lot of them aren't from Italy themselves. Their ancestry is. They're... they're, they're uh, grandfathers and mothers and stuff like that, but they, they're New York, Italian. They, well, there are many Amar uh, uh, Armenians here in the United States of America yeah. who were born here as well. Right, okay. But they don't consider themselves white, so I guess if I was a teacher in Ar Armenian, yeah. if I'm looking at them, I, I think they're white, yeah. but they don't consider themselves white. Well, I mean, white, white meaning white. Why are we though? talking about Armenians? No. Only because I was listening to your story. About I mean, I love the Armenian people, but... I do, too. Yeah. I'm just listening to your story, and I'm, what qualifies a white person if they write on their... You know, what, there's always a survey, yeah. and they have to tell them what, what you are. Right. Lori, Lori yeah. shouldn't, it be, shouldn't it be whatever you identify as well, listen, on that particular day? Uh, you know, Lori... I may not pass. Hey, Lori, here's a good example of what you're talking about. Like, when I go to buy a gun and I register... What sex are you? It'll give you options: Latino, African American. All this what stuff. sex what? are you? Latino? No, no. <laughs> what? And that's, and that's it's a very <laughs> odd. It's a that's, very odd choice. Yeah. Hey, ha, I'm Latino sex. You know what I meant, but anyway, it's not about what you meant. It's about making it clear. 
So he has to like set. You have to like check off what. Right, and, and, and they make a joke of it there. They go, oh, wh- which one are you going to ch- check? And, it's, and they go, well, we assume white, because one guy filled it out for me. I forgot my glasses. Yeah, yeah. And he goes, I, oh, I checked white. Is that what oops, I put? oops. No, that's... <laughs> yeah, said, oops. Uh, but you guys are also Indian, so... Well, well and German, and Swedish, and Danish. Yeah, so, and, and there's some Irish in there, too. I mean, uh, many Americans are mutts. Okay, so it's a gray area. Yeah. It's a gray area. According to the agreement, the purpose of the policy is to solve for past discrimination by the district. It's always, it's always about reparations, isn't it? Uh, which the agreement said disproportionately impacted the hiring of underrepresented teachers in the district as compared to the relevant labor market and the community and resulted in a lack of Here's the word, mm. diversity of teachers. Oh, boy. According to the Star Tribune, 50 teachers of color, mm-hmm. which I, I assume, Lori, could uh, could mean Armenian. Okay. Well, hold on, uh, Matt. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have to for that. Mark, so you're not... You never lived in Jerusalem. You probably have uh, never been to Jerusalem. Have he's you? Russian. No. His, oh, his he's family Russian. are from Russia. He's Poland. We're Poland. Uh, so I, where, where can you imagine that this man is a Polak? Yes. No. I'm no. A- no. Mm. By the way, and you know all the Polish jokes and the quote yeah. unquote Polak jokes oh, and no, so no. on. Stereotypes correct. Well, when it comes to Mark, Mark <laughs> is that Polish joke, <laughs> all wrapped up in one little friggin. Potato chip eating son of a bitch. <laughs> right there. Oh, that's so ugly. <laughs> that's it's true. Just not nice. Because his real last name is Majorski. Okay. Uh, okay. Bo- my, my point is, so you are a Jewish if faith. I, yes. Yes. But so right. you don't say, well, I'm, I'm from Jerusalem, so. Uh, He's not from Jerusalem. Right. He's from Poland. So you're you're Polish. Uh, that's my ancestry, yes. Yes. Polish. Right. So Ju- what is the gray so, area so, here for you, Mark? So being Jewish. So being, I, I don't understand. Lori just crawled inside my, my head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, by the way, this is Long Island logic. I know. This I, is Long Island logic. It makes Island. no sense to anyone unless you're from Long Island That's or my true. brother Mark. <laughs> He's never been to Long Island. <laughs> no, but I'm getting to some right now. <laughs> <clears throat> being a Jew is a faith. It's a religion. That's it. Okay. That's my question. <laughs> Armenian is being Armenian, <laughs> right. and that's a color. I would Lori. Not yes, <laughs> although Armenia does not exist today. Oh. That, that does not exist anymore. Whew. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, we'll continue this later. Uh, according sure. to the Star Tribune, 50 teachers of color will be losing their positions this fall due to cuts tied to the enrollment losses. In a summary of the agreement, the union <laughs> says the policies will move the district closer to safe and stable schools. Students, this is the quote that fries my, chars my buttocks. Hmm. Students need educators <laughs> who look like them and who they can relate to, the document says. That so, means nothing. So that's what we're looking for. That's crazy. They, yes. Our educators must look like us. I remember as a kid, boy, that's what oh, I was oh, searching oh. for. Yeah. I was searching for someone who looked just like me. No. These people are on friggin' drugs. You know what? This school union, man. Abo- you talk about abolish the cops? I mean, something we need? Abolish the friggin' teachers union. I mean, a stranglehold on the Biden admin- administration and any Democrat. You know what, Matt? I once had a German teacher, and she had an underbite. She had an underbite. Her name was Mrs. Yeah. Bagerman. Okay. I don't want to look anything like her. Yeah, right. I don't yeah. want to identify as that German woman. Right. Well, well I'll tell you, Lori. An some, underbite. Some of my yeah. some, some of my teachers, man, were hot. There's two in particular that I well, can remember. Hot. What, what was his name? <laughs> uh, Mr. Irons. <laughs> this this language gives us the ability to identify and address issues that contribute to disproportionately high turnover of educators of color. So, Mark, the fact that uh, you are a learned man, but did you you protested unless you had a Jew teaching you? Correct. 
Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, so, uh, I had my little Jewish star and yeah, bouncing around. Right? Campus. Waving that in the air yeah, in your seat. Probably the only Jewish kid in school. And it's like, right. no, I need a Jewish teacher. And, yeah, especially for my Spanish language. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, Edward Barlow, a band teacher and member of the Minneapolis Federation of Teachers Executive Board, told the Star Tribune that the agreement can be a national model for finding ways to retain teachers of color. The agreement states that these policies will no longer be in effect when the diversity of teachers in the district represent that of the community and labor market. Gee, how about we just keep the teachers that are doing a good job? Uh-uh, no. wrong, oh, Gola. Oh, oh. Wrong answer. Oh, sorry. See, you, wrong damn, answer, you Polak. damn Polak. Yeah, <laughs> see what you do? And speaking of idiot sticks, right here in the golden state, mm. the golden shower state of California, where we emanate here in the hills of the San Fernando Valley, spitting distance from Hollywood <laughs> on Outlaw Radio. I just got that. California Department of Education advocates advocates books promoting gender transitions to kindergartners. That's our California Department of Education. You gotta be kidding. I'm not making this up. Advocating books promoting gender transitions to kindergartners. The recommended books were part of the California Department of Education's curriculum and resources on their website. Wow. The California Department of Education's recommended reading list promotes books for kindergartners about students transitioning and for high schoolers about students kneeling during the national anthem. Oh, my God. The recommended reading list is housed in the curriculum curriculum and instruction resources section of California Department of Education's website, suggesting dozens of books for each age group. Call Me Max, that's a title of a book, listed as being appropriate for grades K through 2, kindergarten through second grade, about a student who lets his teacher know that he wants to be called by a boy's name. Mm -hmm. In the book, narrated by... Max, he raises his hand when his teacher called his name on the first day of school. I wondered if she thought my name didn't make sense for me. I felt that way too, the book reads. Son of a bitch. It also describes Max deciding which bathroom to use. When I went to the store with my dad, this is in the book. This is recommended reading for uh, kindergarten through second grade. It also describes Max deciding which bathroom to use. When I went to the store with my dad, I went to the bathroom with him. When I went to the store with my mom, I went to the bathroom with her. But at school, I had to pick which bathroom to use, the book read. Yeah, that's a troubled kid. Yeah, boy, that's, boy, those are, wow. If that's the worst thing that happens to that kid in their their entire life. Lisa Disbrow, a parent in the California chapter of No Left Turn in Education, um, writes to influence children's minds and hearts that it's possible to be trapped in the wrong physical body because your feelings will tell you that you're trapped is a crock. This belief has gained political support from groups controlling all aspects right here in California education, from daycare providers to preschools, elementary through college, university education, even through every organ and bone in a person's body will forever identify their sex at birth, she said. And that, my friends, is the truth. More on this hypocrisy, this gobbledygook from the left, when we return next on Outlook. Radio.
last moment when you left your children Listen to your children. Listen to your children once more. Listen to your children. Dive bar at the end of the walk of fame. The cartilage left over in a bag of Popeye's chicken. Chronic talk from stars, would-be stars, wannabes, and people who just want to hear themselves talk. This is Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. What a boy would be if Siegfried and Roy had a son. Yeah. <laughs> boy, you are you are listening and watching today, aren't you, folks? Magic Match Outlaw Radio on YouTube and throughout great radio stations throughout the country at outlawradiolive.com. Hey, Matt, just so you know, other than the north side of Chicago, central Wisconsin has the highest rate of Polish blood, including the American Polish in Wisconsin, Highway 66. Uh Um, I'm 50%-ish Polish, 25% German, 35% Austrian. Does that come out right? <laughs> I, I, no, I think, I think it's 110 percent right, there. You're right. Uh, on the front of, uh, oh, that's it. Okay. So a lot of uh, our Polish friends listen uh, in Wisconsin, or at least they did, until I called uh, Mark C.G. Boyer a uh, Polak. Oh boy. Yeah. 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 How many does it take to screw in? A, yeah, forget it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't have any light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. So the California Department of Education's website uh, suggests dozens of books for each age group. Call Me Max was a book that is out there today here in uh, the great, formerly great state of California, uh, initiating uh, and indoctrinating our children into the LGBTQ community. See, they don't know. They're just kids. They don't know. No. So you, you, if you give them a choice, if you give them a choice, then, well, I don't know. I, am I a male or female? If you, if you, you, you got the penis, what are you? Anybody in the room? A male. So, so, so nobody. Thank you. It took a while, but uh, man, our vet, our yeah, friggin' those kids vet, are not, Billy Dilly. Those I, I, kids are uh, not identifying as anything. anything They're right malleable, now. and it's about indoctrination and these ass bite teachers. There's another book called "It Feels Good to Be Yourself," which is uh, certainly promulgated <laughs> here in California. A book about gender identity, also targeted kindergarten to second grade. Uh, It's an expansive, affirming look at gender identity, which explores identities across the spectrum as it introduces various children. Your gender identity might match what people thought you were when you were born, or it might not. 
The book reads, it tells the story of Alex, who is both a boy and a girl. Okay, okay, okay. And this is suggested reading yeah, okay. for it's kindergarten young. through it's second grade. It's too young. When it's Alex was born, everyone thought Alex was a girl, but Alex is both boy and girl. Yeah, I know. This is Alex's gender identity, the book reads. Sick. It's a it's sick too, state. Too it's young. a sick state, and we got to get the hell out of here. There is no such thing as a book about children transitioning genders that is appropriate for a school to recommend to kindergartners, said Parents Defending Education Director of Outreach, Ariza Sanzi. The Department of Education should be worrying much more about reading and math and civics than the gender ideology they're peddling to students. No kidding. And often they're doing this behind the backs of parents. Yeah. For middle schoolers, the main character of the book, Rick, grapples with his own identity after being uncomfortable with his father's jokes about girls and his best friend's explicit talk about sex. The book description says Rick discovers his identity may just be to opt out of sex altogether. There's a couple more books, and I'm going to get to it well, uh, Matt, next you, hour. If what? you choose what you would like to be, what would you like to be? Wants to be a cowboy. Oh, you can be my cowgirl. be my cowgirl, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Allen, pass me a gallon. (laughs) One of my top ten favorite songs of all time, besides uh, Don't Worry About Me, this song... Based on Chopin's Prelude in C minor, but have you ever heard this version? A band named Featherbed? I just discovered this yesterday. Here we go. Seventy-one. Different lyrics. How about that? How 
about this? Barry Manilow on lead vocals with a group called Featherbed. Way before the version we all know. Hold on fast. Love this song. I discovered that this funky little 71 ditty, which is disco, but be way before the disco trend, my buddy had a little something to do with this. Really? Tony Orlando, what's up, my man? What's up? <laughs> you want to know something amazing? You <laughs> are magic, Matt. You know why? Huh. You found that. That is the only time that song has ever been played on any radio station <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the planet Earth. <laughs> I mean, is it this incredible? I was blown away. I forget how I found this, except that I love Barry Manilow's Could It Be Magic? And I bet because because you, you are a lover of fine music. I bet that's one of your favorite songs as well, Tony Orlando. Well, I wrote it. I wrote it with Barry. <laughs> I mean, that's my lyric. If you listen to that lyric, it's different than the one that came out as a ballad. Yes. I signed Barry. I signed him to uh, Columbia Records under Clive Davis's wing when I was running the music division. And then got him his first record deal at Alistair. And then he did that slow version with a different lyric. And so there you go. You found something really magical. Thank you. I mean, th but this, yeah, this is sort of, sort of incredible. When I saw Tony Orlando's name on there, you, right. I mean, you, but you, you produced this song as well, yeah. correct? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I produced his first records, actually, Matt. And uh, I knew he would become a superstar, which he did, a megastar. Yeah. And so one of the one of the feathers in the cap that I had during my tenure with Clyde Davis. So, yeah, that's you that's, really that's found cool. something there. Or my family's <laughs> happy you played it. You're the only one that's ever played it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it, what, was it? Hey, 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 Tony Orlando, in 1971, what was it? Sort of a minor a charting song? Did it make the top it 40? It came on the charts. It came and went. I think at 98. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? Is that right? Oh God, I'm not kidding. <laughs> but, okay, but okay, hold you on. Know, even Barry, even Barry, later in his uh, box set, put that record in his box set and said that at first he was worried about it, but he loved it after all. He thought it, was, it should have been a hit record. So, you know, it's funny. It was two years before he released the ballad. Right. Right, which is which is a masterpiece, and I am a I, I, you know we've never we we've talked for hours on end, Tony Orlando, uh, but we've never talked about my my love for Chopin. This man, see anything with a minor chord, I'm sort of sucked in, Tony. Are you, do, right. do you identify well, the with chorus, that? The chorus was really fashioned uh, when, when I wrote the melody, and the chorus was fashioned off the off the four seasons. Wait, did you? Are, I wrote the show pad. You you cut it. You, you cut know, it. Could it be magic? Um, that was very much. I was trying to four be season. a four season. Very top forty record, and, and I was going for four seasons, kind of feeling that. But uh, it's funny, you know. It, the title "Could It Be Magic" came from um, a little song years ago called "Could This Be Magic," uh -huh. and I just turned it and put that one different. And it changed the word of the song, the lyric of the song. Once again, once again, proving that my buddy Tony Orlando is pure freaking genius. Can I ask him something? Yeah. That, <laughs> hey, Tony Orlando, my brother Marty. Marty. Hi, Tony. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. Just still, still doing impressions of you, and I'm getting it's a big hit these days. <laughs> People are liking it. He doesn't remember. <laughs> no, he do, he doesn't care. You no. Know, so what Mart said was he's doing impressions. He's doing impressions of you. Yeah. Uh, it's okay. Hey, anyway, so I want to ask him. Do you yeah. still have your mustache? Do you, oh wait, does Tony have his mustache? Yeah. You do the you do the you do the impression of me when. Bro, are you ready? Go for it. Okay, go. It's always a pleasure, Tony. I had a question for you. Um, um, do you still have your mustache? <laughs> <laughs> He's still, that's a cross between Tony Orlando and, and Al Goldstein, Goldstein yes. of Screw Magazine. Hey, you know what? You know what? Me about that voice. The girl speaks it's sexy, so go have it. Uh, you bet your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, like, now, Tony, you're you're in Vegas, are you not? 
Or no. I'm in Vegas. Yeah. Listen, I'm on my way to see another magic man. Uh-huh. Who he, well, it's Chris Angel. Mm. He has a new television show coming out called Magic with the Stars. With this, wait, magic with you're, you're cutting in and out, Tony. But I, magic with the stars is that what it is? Yeah. Like yeah. dancing with the stars. Yeah, but magic with the, the stars. Star. Okay. With the stars, and Chris is the host. And Chris, Chris is sort of like your godson or your uncle Tony to him, right? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he's uh, one of the nicest, most wonderful. Him and Adam Sandler, two of the best on the planet. They're yeah. wonderful. Did he see Adam Sandler? Yeah, yeah. No. I love that. Tony, yeah. I love Adam Sandler. He knows man. good people. Tony yeah. knows only good people. You know, Tony was a uh, buddy. Well, I had a good time doing a movie called That's My Boy with, with Adam. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, oh, I yeah. I text Adam tonight. It takes him five seconds to get back to me. Not like me. Yeah, no, but he, he cut, very forgiving. You know that, Matt. Right? Yeah, he see he cut out just then. But <laughs> he said, not like you. He said, not not like uh, not yeah. like Tony. When I uh, reach out to him, and it takes him uh, oh a month and a half. That's a good friend, Tony. You're a good friend. <laughs> I love you. you know that. Yeah, no, no, I, no. I love you too. Hey, I, I, I just uh, since I have you on the phone, before you're about to uh, to enter the Chris Angel uh, forum of TV magic. Um, I've been watching a lot of the Dean Martin TV shows from the late 60s to early 70s. I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm going to ask Chris to have the great... That would be cool. Okay, so... So magic. See, see, I think he's cutting the phone out on purpose so he doesn't have to commit to anything he's I, saying here. Yeah. Because what I think well, what I think what he said is he wants, he wants me to be on his TV I, show. Is that what you said? Yeah, I want you on his TV show. Okay, that's see, that's what I thought he said, but it cut out. <laughs> no, see, Lori, you, Lori, you think I'm making that up? I don't. No, oh, you know that's what he meant, right? Yes, I knew it was what he meant. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hey, Magic Matt, wouldn't it be great with you and Chris? Yeah, I I would love to do some swallowing razor blades, or I would love to uh, saw Chris in half. I listen. I'm a manip. I'm a magical manip. I'm a prestidigitator from way back. Uh, um, so, um, um, t- t- Tony, how much does it set you back for those tickets for tonight? What? Oh yeah, the tickets. Yeah, yeah. yeah come on, it's Tony Orlando. I know. Tony doesn't. Have, you know when Tony Orlando pays when he wants to, when he wants to pay. You know where Tony? I'll tell you what I paid for. I'll tell you what I paid for last Saturday night here in Vegas. Yeah. I paid to go see Lionel Richie. Oh. Let me tell you something. Yeah. That was the greatest show on this. I mean, I'm not kidding you. He was unbelievable. He is unbelievable. An hour and a half. Every song he sang, he wrote. Yeah, my wow. uh, okay. So you you know my favorite songs. Could it be magic? Don't worry about me. And Hello by Lionel Richie is one of my favorite songs of all time. Yeah. He's great. Listen, Matt, honestly, you have to come to Vegas to the win to see him when he's on, on a weekend. Look at his schedule. You will not believe his show. Seriously. Yeah. Well, I wish I knew someone that knew him. But, see, Tony me, made it. Me. Me. No, I get to win. No, no, no. no. <laughs> me. No, Tony, me. To, Tony even mentioned a second ago that he paid for tickets to see Lionel Richie. Good for him. Yeah. You know why? You want to know why? Why? Because it was Jenny, my daughter's birthday last Saturday. Mm. And that was a gift for her from me. I didn't want him paying for that. No, that's beautiful. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh that's happy sweet. Birthday. Wow. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, my love. This, this, is, this is only the second. <laughs> this is only the second <laughs> offspring that's of Tony best. Orlando I've talked to. What? Yeah. Hey, that, say say that, that again. Boy's that voice, I want to have you come in and do my radio show. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you, wait, wait, are you talking to my brother Mark or me? Because voice. Oh. Oh. I said happy birthday to his daughter as Tony. Oh. Happy birthday, love. Sweetheart, yeah, I hope you enjoy your birthday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know why Tony Orlando is going to live forever? Because he's jovial. And he, and, he, and he seems to have a happy day every day. Yep. Every day. Despite the machination of what's going on in the United States of America these days. God bless you, the great Tony Orlando. I miss you. God bless you. Love you. Love you, buddy. I love you more, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. There he is. There he is. He's so sweet. Aloha, Tony Orlando. (laughs) See, I wanted to get... Maybe he didn't hear what I was... I, I wanted to talk to him about Frank Sinatra. I mean, I really want to have... Yeah, but he wants you to come to Vegas. 
So he wants you to come locally <laughs> so he second. can hang out with if you. You're, if you recall, it was about eight months ago he invited me to sing with <laughs> yes. him in Vegas. And then, uh, and then all, happened. That, yeah, I'll tell you what happened. He invited me to come sing with him in Vegas, and uh, the date uh, just vanished. Yeah. <laughs> it just vanished. We should take a road trip. We, Lori? Uh, when do we do anything together? And by the way, it's not my doing. So, so when you say that on the show, yes. it, I get the impression that you're acting for the audience. Now, that's good acting. That is good acting. Well, she's, I've always put her in the category of a great thespian. Oh, no. What? See, you, for some reason, Mark, you don't see it. I, I have watched her body of work. I've watched I've her. I've watched her body. I've watched her. Ow. I've watched her <laughs> with, is that creepy? with her former husband, yes. Morton Dowdy Jr., in Monsters. Yeah, well, Monsters is what I'm talking about. I thought she was great. What, you thought she overdid it? Come on, man. What? I mean, I know that that was kind of the shtick back then for these, you know. The, what? The, 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 it's like, it's almost like the old 20s it. or 30s where it's like, why well, I had to pound you. <laughs> hey, you're doing so I, And just over the top a little bit. Wow. Almost that Charlton Heston over the top. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, Lori. I'm sorry you had to hear this from my brother. Oh, I don't care. I don't care about Marty's opinion. <laughs> I, don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Lori, I care about your opinion. That really hurts my feelings. I don't care. <laughs> what I'm saying, Marty, is... It hurts my feelings, Lori. Marty, I had so many lines, and Marty. then everything was reaction, Marty. So I can understand <laughs> what you would think that it's like from yeah. the 20s. Because the camera ISO on I didn't on say it was like... Me, I said it's just, it's, uh, hold on, she's talking technical stuff. The camera ISO on you. So the isolation on Lori, yes? Yeah. Yes, I was with Morton Downey Jr. and Laura Brown again I know. in that scene. I've seen it. Yep, and uh, you're the only one living. Oh, boy. How and about you, that? I'm the only one living in that entire cast. Hey! Everybody In the gone. entire cast. Oh, yes. boy. Even the creature. <coughs> wow. Yeah, hey, you know, if you're watching us on YouTube, then I don't want you to do it right now. Don't do it. I mean, don't, don't, don't leave do us. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't leave us right now, but... Go I think if you punch in Monsters yes, Morton you, Downey Jr., it'll come up on YouTube, and, and you'll see thing. our blondie I still have a pr name. radio I, producer, Lori. You can see me, too, as Lori Krebs. I mean, you'd find me there. What? I have a name. Now, yeah, Lori just Krebs. About I, I, all right, you can do that. I have a name. I, for, I am not just a number. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> it, I, let me try to break this down for, and I shouldn't have to do this with the producer of the show. You make it as easy as possible for folks to procure you in this show, and the easiest way would be to punch in Morton Downey Jr. Morton uh, Monster, uh, Monsters. Hey. That would be the easiest way possible. He gets all credit. Right? What? He Almost gets credit. credit? He was yeah, the lead. Yeah, yeah, Morton Downey Jr. gets credit in that damn thing. I think he was the lead actor. It should be I would go with Lori. It should be Lori. Thank you, Billy. Yeah. Thank but she you. did a bunch of stuff. She did. A, she shot a bunch of stuff in Canada, and she she wore really weird, um, uh, like, Hershey's Kisses on her head as oh, a I've dancer. Seen those, I've seen those pictures. Yeah. She's big in Canada. Hey, if you like chocolate, I know Lori does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do love chocolate. Uh, actor, speaking of Hollywood and showbiz, actor Frank Grillo slams L.A.'s crime after his trainer killed. Powers that be need to get off their asses and fix this S-word. It comes, it goes down, it's, it's Gascon. The man that... that yeah, and, and if you think I'm buying for a second, we didn't have enough signatures... No, no. Oh, we did. No, no. It's they threw Lord, out. This know. is a scam, a lamb, oh, a friggin' wait ding a dong. They threw it out. Yes. 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 Lori, Lori. See, this is why you watch the local news and everything veers left on the newscast that you watch. Well, they won't That's report. why you don't yeah. see the correct reporting, the stuff that is real out there. It's all oh happy go lucky and isn't California beautiful? No, California with a land, is not with beautiful. a land of opportunity. Yes, but There's they will no go. There's no opportunity in California. Yeah, they I'll will tell go. You that. They will well, go out right of, now. Birdland. Yeah, they will go out of their way to gloss over the bad stuff. I didn't and know this. and I, I can't I can't even blame it on the public of California. I believe this is a scam. This is BS. And they threw out signatures and they get away with blasphemy. Gascon, I'll tell you what happened. Those got, these ass bites. They got 21 get, days. They get away with crap because they know that they can. 
So yes, what, Lori. What happens is if you sign your name and it's not yep. exactly in the box, yep. right. they say we have to discount that. Right. But it's if it's the real. other way around, and if it's some sort of yeah. proposition that favors the left, they'll take. Boy, I'll tell you automatic. what, they'll accept that signature yeah. so quick it'll it'll make your head spin. By the way, Gascon, that guy, he 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 is the devil. Of course, he's the devil. He's evil as hell. Man. I mean, it shouldn't even be it shouldn't be a gray area no. about getting rid of this piece of crap. Oh, he this is. commie son of a bitch. Yeah. Prisoners are putting his name, tattooing it on their arm. Sure they are. getting out early. Avengers, Avengers and Captain America star Frank Grillo slammed the rising crime in Democrat-controlled L.A. from where we emanate Outlaw Radio oh, and Magic, Magic Matt's Outlaw Radio on YouTube after his boxing trainer, Azuma Bennett, was shot and killed over nothing. The actor also called on the powers that be in L.A. to get off their asses and fix this S. They won't. He made everybody feel good about training. Uh, I don't know what's happening to Los Angeles. Would a beautiful guy like this get shot and killed over nothing? Well, Grillo, you should know what's happening here in L.A. Everybody if knows. you live here. Right. Lori, well, but everybody knows a lot of your clients outside of this job that you do, right. who happen to be on the left, they have no problem with Gascon, Lori. They don't until it affects their family. Of personally. course, yeah. it's called the NIMBY effect. Not in my backyard. The minute it affects them, all of a sudden, but they don't give an S. And that's the lefty mantra. That's who these people are, man. Yep. They're bad people. I'm not talking about classic liberals, but I am talking about Left. lefties. lefties. You commie pieces of crap. Uh, so this uh, 30-year-old who was a trainer at Fortune Boxing Gym fatally shot outside a marijuana dispensary. Homicide detectives have not revealed the motive or identified any subs, uh, suspects. Bennett, an Australian native, shot at least eight times. Holy crap. And died while being taken to a local hospital. Wow. I'm glad this story is traveling. Maybe we can force the powers that be to get their uh, off their asses and fix this S. Uh, Grillo wrote in Instagram reacting to the news of his uh, slamming the rising crime in L.A. We in L.A. need to wake up uh, to what has become a common occurrence. You won't oh. wake up because it's filled, this town is filled with a bunch of lefty maggots. And they don't want, you don't want the right thing to be done. No. It's, it's all about feelings and feelings until once again it happens to you or someone you love. It's a little You know what, Matt? There's not a community in this, in the entire state of California. <coughs> Let's take Los Angeles. Yeah. There's you take, a, take Los Angeles, please. Oh. Yeah. There's not an area that is not getting hit by crime. Hmm. Left and right. Please pursue. That's what I'm watching, left and right. I'm watching every citizen app, and I'm seeing what's going on, and it's yeah. really, really bad. Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, our town here in L.A. has been plagued uh, with homicides, violent crimes, gun violence, all way through the roof as of April. Shootings. It's been going on for years. <coughs> it's gotten worse. As of April. I understand. Shootings in the Democrat controlled city, that's Los Angeles from where we emanate Outlaw Radio, are up by nearly 69% disgusting. since 2020. Yeah. That's disgusting. <laughs> Violent crime up by 7.2% compared to 2021. Additionally, robberies, many of which involve firearms, are up by 18.5% compared to last year. Yet, uh, Gascon says, nothing to see here. No. It's worse right. in Republican-controlled towns. Yep. Lying what? pieces of crap. Yeah. Uh, that, can that what? guy speak? Does he have a speech impediment or what, something? What, Gascon? Yeah. Oh, no, it's, a, I don't know. Yeah, but it, okay. Kermit the Frog. I can't even frog. understand him. Yeah, Kermit the, Kermit the Frog. Yeah. Thank you, Billy. Okay. <laughs> it's spot on. <laughs> That's who he is. Uh, real quickly here, nearly five months after Will Smith assaulted uh, Chris Rock at the Academy Awards, uh, and we all know that Will Smith universally loved. I mean, this man was adored. Never... Never universally uh, beloved uh, by uh, his wife, and folks never really loved his wife, uh, Pinka Jada Smith, but they've seen their popularity, or Q scores, as they call them in Hollywood, yeah. take a steep dive. 
Before the incident, Will Smith consistently ranked among the country's top five or ten most positively rated actors in Q stores. And they do this semi-annual, they do the surveys, and they found that he was way up there. But between Q store, uh, scores, January survey conducted before the Oscars, and July polling, the first following the slap, Smith's positive Q uh, score plummeted from a stellar 39 to 24 which uh, Henry Schaefer, exec VP of Q Scores, characterized as a very significant and precipitous decline. Um, unsurprisingly, Smith's negatives uh, rocketed from 10 to 26. The average is around 16 or 17. Uh, but this one slap has damn near put an end to his career, hence that that ridiculous apology that we played last yeah. week on the show. And you can tell, and what did I say about it? It's him trying to curry favor yes. and buy it back. I don't think he's really sorry for slapping Chris. I don't think it's, a, it's reality. Um, there is some really good news in the report. Johnny Depp. The victim of a malicious and dishonest, and this went on for a friggin' year, a Me Too propaganda campaign has emerged from this courtroom vindication with a 35 Q score. Puts him just below the top six Q scores out there. Good going, Johnny Depp, man. Morgan Freeman with a 44, Tom Hanks, 43, Samuel Jackson, 37, Keanu Reeves, 37, Dwayne Johnson, 36, Ryan Reynolds, 36. There you have it. We'll be this after back. A lot to get to on Outlaw Radio.
Radio remembers the good old days. Johnny Carson, Chuck Barris, Wilt the Stilt, before millennials were around to get on our nerves. Now get off my lawn. Speaking with the legendary Tony Orlando a few minutes ago, he said, Matt, uh, listen, I'm inviting you to the Lionel Richie show. Any weekend in Las Vegas that Lionel is performing, simply buy your tickets and <laughs> come <Yeah>. see him. <laughs> I'm not going to ask Tony for tickets to Lionel Richie. Uh, you know, How could you? Uh, well, I guess I could. Well, uh, he, he only... He, he explained he only bought him because yeah. his daughter's birthday. Yeah, he, yeah, he didn't want him to pay for his daughter's birthday. Right. And you know, and Tony's, uh, I think he's done quite well. I think so. I mean, my God, he <laughs> produced the first version of Could It Be Magic <laughs> yeah. from Barry Manilow well. and Featherbed. Yeah. The band Featherbed featuring Barry Manilow. Yeah, we got to go out with that song today. We got to go out with that song because it is, I've never heard this thing. And I'm a huge fan of the long version of Could It Be Magic by Barry Manilow. This seven minute version is absolute magic. It is, it is so good. Very sweet. Uh, what, the song? Yeah. Oh, the song. Yeah. It's Chopin, Lori. But I like it's, it. It's totally Chopin. <laughs> Hit me now. <laughs> oh, we, oh, we, oh. Greatest, top, I greatest top 40 song in the last 15 years, right here. Yeah. North Hollywood strippers. Don't tell me there ain't some North Hollywood strippers dancing to this little ditty. Oh, baby. yeah, man. They're going to uh, vote to join the Actors Union. <laughs> I love this. I don't. Uh, majority of the exotic dancers at a North Hollywood topless bar. North Hollywood, 10 minutes, spitting distance from where we are in the San Fernando Valley, 10 minutes away. They voted to hold an election to unionize the strippers by joining the Actors' Equity Association. By the way, we're, we're, what are actors anyway? A bunch of friggin' prostitutes. No, this, is, this is dancers. They're a bunch of prostitutes. Join the Actors' Equity Association, a union that represents uh, theatri AA. theatrical actors. AA is the equity for dancers. I have a card from Beyond Broadway, I know. The strippers have been on strike against the Star Garden Strip Club since March. You know, and I got a thing or two to say about this. Yeah. Treat these women correctly. That's right. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, they've now notified the National Labor Relations Board to inform federal officials that they intend to make an effort to unionize the 30 dancers who work at the bar. Right. I'm having a problem with this. <laughs> hey, you know, you're Big right. Problem. Treat them correctly because, you know, they get up there and get all sweaty and they stuff. They do get they, all, oh, man, <laughs> you know, yeah. They get all musty They're not stuff. trained. Uh, <laughs> you know what? That union. Don't make me think about it. I know, man. Oh, oh my God. Don't make me think about it because I'm just a must and a gentleman. Focus your attention to stage number three. Here Savannah. comes Alexis. <laughs> Tipper well, guys. <laughs> Don't say Alexa. You'll get her going over oh, there. Yeah. I'm having a big problem with this. <coughs> yeah, okay, Laura. 
Uh, oh, let's see. J.K. Rowling accuses Society of Authors chairwoman of failing to stand up to woke mob because of pro-trans views. J.K. Rowling, God bless you. God bless you for being a female, knowing you're a female, and knowing there's a difference, and not cowtelling to this woke mob who say that men, women, uh, be whatever you want. No, there's male, there's female. That's it. That's it. Be you know, if if you can be. if uh, yeah. if you're of age, <laughs> if you're of age, hopefully in your 20s, and you decide that it ain't for you, and you want that sex change, go for it. You know, for the most part, you'll probably wish you hadn't had your boobies lopped off Not 10 always. years later. Not always. You, hey, Lori, I, yes. ju- I think I mentioned that your argument not always doesn't hold water. Or like do you Bill, know the, anybody? The not, the not always you? argument doesn't hold water. Or like hey, Bill Matt, Marson. You know Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has accused uh, wow. Society of Authors chairwoman and chocolate author Joanne Harris of failing to stand up for authors against threats from the woke. Yes, stand up to the woke. Tell them to stick it where the sun... Well, you know. You know that old thing. Yeah. But uh, J.K. Rowling, God bless you. Wisconsin School District... Wisconsin. Okay. Everything's happening in Wisconsin, you my know, friends. You know, a positive tip, man. This we, is why. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If it didn't get so damn cold there, I promise you I'd be there in yeah. a second. The cost of living is low. People are great. Beautiful lakes, and the people are gorgeous. Yes. You should go. And the world's greatest dive bars. Yes. Probably some good steak eating out there, too. Oh, my God. They, love it. There huh? are some prime rib joints huh? that, yeah. That's what I'm talking and Lori about. just said, I'd love it. How many times have you been to Wisconsin? I've never okay, been never, there. never been there. But you're, what, Wisconsin what you School love? District bans staff from displaying pride flags, listing pronouns in email. Wisconsin School District bans staff from displaying uh, displaying pride flags. And once again, I have to say, pride, what is your accomplishment exactly? What are you prideful about? What is the accomplishment? I'm only, I only have pride when I accomplish something. How often is that? Uh, Wisconsin, uh, throughout my life, okay, uh, many, many, many things. How about lately? Uh, Wisconsin, now you're talking apples and oranges, and now you're attacking. No, I'm not. I'm I, just asking you a question. N- no, you're attacking. You attacking because this is not about me this is about a wisconsin school board Ah. voted in favor of a policy that prohibits teachers and staff from displaying gay pride flags and other (laughs) items that district officials consider political in nature because they are political they are political the Kettle Moraine School Board voted to keep a code of conduct in place that the superintendent recently interpreted as forbidding district employees from displaying political or religious messages, including pride flags, Black Lives Matter, we back the badge signs. So all of those. So I, I think that's smart. Even we back the badge. I back the badge, but it's still a political statement. It is. It is. I wear a hat with a, a, a flag representing the police officers. But you're not a flag on a wall in a school that I know of. Uh, Superintendent, that could have been a good job for me. <laughs> that would have been a great gig. <laughs> Superintendent Stephen Plum recently told the board that the district's interpretation of a policy that prohibits staffers from using their position to promote partisan politics, which these staffers do, as they screw up our children, the teachers, oh, screw boy. them up beyond belief, religious views and propaganda for personal monetary or non-monetary gain change following a legal analysis. Jim Romanowski, see, our buddy from Wisconsin told us, a lot of, lot yeah. of polls right, in Wisconsin. Right, Mark? See, you the know. proof is right here. Yeah. Jim Romanowski. And by the way, I don't know if this uh, Jim is Polish. Well, I'm simply assuming. Okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, you think so? Yeah. It's, it's probably a good good bet. <laughs> uh, he was the only board member to vote against the ban, saying he changed his mind about the policy after hearing from students and staff. Now, dig this. Just got a text from a buddy of mine in Wisconsin, and he said that a lot of the polls in Wisconsin are are Democrats, and they're hardline Demos- Democrats because of the union. So they will vote. They will vote for a Democrat. Another reason to dislike the polls, right, oh, Mark? See? Huh? Right? Uh, no, no, no. Possibly. <laughs> and Boston, you talk about a city that is just shouldn't, shouldn't be there. Well, there's no reason for Boston. Lobster. 
Yeah, it's great lobster, and their their clam, clam chowder is off the hook. I've had it right there in the Nathaniel Hall. I mean, I've enjoyed it there. Laura, did you do you like clam and chowder? And it's great. Laura? No, no. I heard they have great tea parties. She won't eat any shellfish. She won't eat oh. any fish of any kind. Uh, cradle well, of the American you. Revolution wants to cancel another founding father. Boston. 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 Yeah, yeah. Go the back, you can, Boston. Liberal protesters had recently uh, gathered, oh, at Faneuil Hall, uh, the aforementioned, uh, to demand that the mayor and other officials change the name of Faneuil Hall, an historic landmark first built 280 years ago. Why? Because these liberal protesters have declared the building a symbol of white supremacy. <laughs> They're in Boston. Where the Boston Hospital, the Children's Hospital, they are promoting mm. sex change. Oh, the Boston Hospital, Children's Hospital, promoting, going out of their way to say, you here's know, the, here's the penis song. you may be in the wrong yeah. body, get over here. Yeah. As Bill Maher would say, here's the penis song. These, yeah, these are sick yeah. bastards. These are sick, sick people. Protesters demand Boston officials change Faneuil Hall's name because of uh, a white supremacist. Uh, Peter Faneuil, the merchant who designed and built the, uh, the hall, finished in 1742 and did, in fact, own slaves. <laughs> so, therefore, he must be considered pure evil. <laughs> but everyone owned s slaves back then, including black people. You see, that's the way it worked. Mark, did you ever own? What? Oh, forget it. No, did no, I Mark. ever own black slaves? I, I didn't did, say that. I didn't what? ask that. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, to be sure, the practice of slavery is obscene, a crime against humanity, and thank God for Republican Abraham Lincoln for doing the right thing. Oh, no, he didn't. No, no, no. He's no, a bad, he, didn't? he was a bad guy. He was a bad guy? Yes. But he's a, the Republican oh, no, that no. freed the slaves. Yeah, I know. According to... Uh, oh, yeah, really? Yeah, bad guy. Bad guy. The growing list of white supremacists labeled founding fathers, uh, be they presidents Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, or now Peter... Peter Faneuil uh, are being defined, diminished, and dismissed over this issue. Uh, any contributions they made to the creation of the greatest nation on the face of this earth are now deemed irrelevant to these woke yeah. friggin' pieces of crap. Knock more statues down. A holes, and they are a holes. And I got time for probably not the entire thing. And and P.S. I don't have time for the entire thing. But uh, I finally found something funny on Gutfeld, and he's talking about food appropriation. And, and some of this is funny, and some of this lends itself to the video version, but I know that our audience on Outlaw Radio is smart enough to sort of g g cut through what they would be seeing. You know, uh, Gutfeld has a, a panel of uh, folks. <laughs> you got the big black guy, you yeah. got the, you know, the... A lot of races, and then that Kennedy chick. I don't know how she still has a gig, but God bless her. You know, good for you. I don't, yeah, yeah. Not certain what she ever did. I don't know. I know she was here in L.A. for a while. Yeah, she's like a Kardashian. <clears throat> you know, she's got those weird, uh, those big glasses. That's uh, Kennedy. But uh, this is Gutfeld talking about food appropriation. And if it weren't real, because it is real... This would be a laughing stock. This is real. This, this, is, this pure, is the onion. Pure the onion, yes. This is the onion, but it's reality. This is where these woke people are heading. Anything. <laughs> we both, we all have COVID. We both, we all have COVID. Lori and I don't. We're going to be dead. Lori and I don't do stuff. Anything that, that smacks of being good or wholesome, the woke hates. They want to change everything that's good. They want to turn abnormal into normal. Abby normal. Well, love us. Yeah. Love us because we changed our sex. We don't have to love you regardless. Are you? a good person from the beginning before the sex change a lot of times the answer is well no you're a pure a-hole who vote for democrats you know did i just say that i think i just said that here comes uh gutfeld and food appropriation and uh, i think some of this you'll find interesting bear with me here on outlaw radio on youtube magic matt's outlaw radio it's uh gut oh and let me, let me just say this i don't need to i i think gutfeld is uh lucky to have a gig
Never found him riveting or extremely funny. Not really. Do you know what I'm talking I, about? Yes, exactly, and not really. But, you know, God bless me. You get it in two seconds and it's over. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm like a Bill Maher who is f- a funny guy. Absolutely funny guy. You know, he's on the wrong side a lot of the times, but lately he's on the right side. Yeah. But, okay, Greg Gutfeld, here we go. Should you throw away your pad thai if it's made by a white guy? Uh-huh. <laughs> and are we always racist even when we're stuffing our faces? True, they've ruined sports, movies, and books. Now the woke are going after the cooks. An op-ed in the New York Post owned by our parent company, Arby's, That's sort of says funny. woke food lovers That's have sort of lost funny. their minds over cultural appropriation. It's part of the woke plan to ruin everything fun, from yep. eating to murder. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They've ruined murder, yeah, too. They they ruined. Ruined. The writer points to recent <laughs> articles calling out Caucasian cooks who dare make ethnic dishes not from their native lands. Mm-hmm. Oh my Someone God. better not tell them about Elizabeth Warren's powwow chow. <laughs> and they're serious about this. They're serious about this. I love that joke. They target the late Diana Kennedy, a 99-year-old British chef who pioneered Mexican cooking. Writes the New York Times, she never reckoned with her authority over Mexican cuisine as a white British woman. Uh, Too bad she's dead or she would tell them to go eat a bag of spotted dicks. Now you know what that is in, in England. Then By they the show way, a this picture. is a spotted dick. Yeah. I think, isn't that a dessert? Yeah. Like a pudding. There's a lot of room in there, Jamie. <laughs> and now he's doing a sex thing. I don't Are know you... whether to eat it or uh, eat it. See, oh, no. see, okay, so we heard nice. enough. But, you know, good bit and about food appropriation. <laughs> yeah. And and then Gutfeld, I think, goes too far, right? Yeah. This we is... don't, so he's doing some sexual thing on it. We don't know whether to eat it. Or, okay. Is it just me? I'm mean, over explaining. Come on, I mean, comment. Comment on our YouTube channel. Is it just me or is Gutfeld overrated? And here's a guy, politically, we're on the same damn side. See, I don't, I'll go after anyone who I think may have less talent. We'll be this after back on Outlaw. by any other name are still bananas. And now there's a new game in town led by an hombre named Matt. A poker-playing, cigar-smoking, barbecue-eating talker. They call him magic in these parts. And he's made bananas a kind of art form. The kind of talking that makes people sit up and bark at the moon. Don't leave his face. Ordinary just got better. Outlaw Radio with Magic Matt Allen. I must mention him first because I'll forget. Billy Dilly, 
Thank you for all that you do. The great Billy Dilly, HR man, and cat whisperer. We will have a brand new in the series of Billy Dilly cat whispering up on YouTube tomorrow. So if you're watching this live, you know when that is. If you're <laughs> watching us at some other point, tomorrow could be any day. But the new one, yeah. you will love even more than the first one. Well, couldn't you just take bits from, that you did from the first one and just throw that in there? Because the cats no. all sound the same. completely rewritten. Yeah. No, complete recreated. Oh, well, good, good. Complete from the ground up. I'm impressed. Oh, working on this one. Yeah, good. Uh, my thanks to Mark C.G. Boyer, my brother T Mark. T. Laurie Downey Jr., the great and ubiquitous Ted Bearer of Movie Guide Awards, and it's movieguideawards.org, movieguideawards.org. If you'd like to read and watch some wholesomeness in family entertainment, it's all there. And Ted Bearer, love him from the bottom of my heart. Man, I talked to a couple guys today on yeah. the phone that I love dearly. Don't forget Tony, about me, Matt. Tony Orlando, <laughs> God bless you, Tony Orlando. A man that must live forever. We need that man in our life forever. And before we go, Papa John's, I got no problem with Papa John's, you heard me. They're now serving pizza without a crust, which they call a bowl, hmm. but looks more like they just threw the toppings and sauce and cheese in a box and that's it. And, and although I appreciate Papa John's, what is a pizza without the crust? What are you thinking? Isn't the crust the entire point of a pizza? Sure, man. Laurie, would you eat a bowl of pizza? Never. I no. judge a pizza by its crust. Never. Right? No, never. <laughs> never. Yeah. It's hard to even eat pizza on the West Coast. And finally, I found a job that I was born to do. A flag on a school wall. <laughs> Second only to that particular <laughs> gig, you can pay people to wait in line for you. Are you aware of this? Oh my God. Perfect, man. Yes. Or, okay, but think That's about cool. this. That's cool. Yes, it would come in handy at the DMV. Disney, Disneyland. How much? Yeah, DMV. Lori always asks me specifics that I don't have the answer to. I don't know because I'm certain that it's negotiable. Sure. Yes. Um, Who are these people? Are I they mean, homeless? The, when Who is the when people? is the last time you were in line at the DM friggin' V? They checked your ID before letting you in line. But would you pay for this convenience? I would. See, I would as well. You can go hang out in your car, have them, have them text you when th your number comes up. But more than pay for the convenience, yeah. sign me up. Oh, to, to, have, to have, have the, the job. Right yes. Yeah. I mean, how fun, how easy is Just that? Just stand there and make a couple bucks, man. I mean, especially if it's if it's worthy of a couple hundred bucks. I doubt it's that much. Yeah. But some real rich person, half an hour in line, 200 bucks, an hour in line, 200 bucks. That ain't bad, Cashish. <laughs> Thanks to Lori Downey Jr., my brother Mark. Gee. I'll continue to be Magic Matt. Until next week, don't forget Bumblebees Can't Fly. Master.